What's going on, guys? I'm Knight. And I'm Logan. And this is the Film Cave, your one-stop shop for all things film and entertainment. With a little bit of a spin from us on our end. Guys, this is a weekly show centered around all things entertainment. Now, that's mostly going to be film because obviously that's our background. But a lot of other fields can be covered here that would not be the same without our honest opinions. Now, not only do we give our insight, but we celebrate, we debate, and you might just have a little fun along the way. So let's make it happen. Let's do it. All right, brother, man. So, well, first, let me speak to the audience. Thank you for joining us on this new road, this new addition to the Film Cave. And I want to personally thank my new co-host, my brother, Mr. Logan Swish. Thank you. Of course. It's like I said, this is something we've been trying to do for a minute, and obviously we had to. Of course. So this is one thing I, I didn't want to say that I didn't tell you this before we started, but the first time we ever did this show together when you were doing the studio thing, pre-COVID life, you were killing yeah. it. And we ended it, and I had so much fun. And I, I was real selfish. And I said, I told you, I said, Hey man, have your fun. Bring all the <laughs> guests you want, you know, over the next few weeks. I said, but one day that's going to be our show. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, I, there's just not, it's, you're not going to have a choice. And uh, thankfully COVID hit and just screwed us all up. And now uh, I get, I get my, I get my permanent spot over here on the side. Uh, so so I, I could not be more excited. I, I really think that this is going to be an awesome show for everyone. Uh, if you're a fan of his channel, my channel uh, and you know, many other things that we're going to be bringing into it that usually aren't on our channels, um, so I think that this could be a really fun show and, uh, I'm excited. Oh yeah. It's definitely going to be fun as hell, man. And it's just that everybody know we're not going to be pulling any punches. This is going to be a real ass show, yeah. real insight, real debate. Sometimes it may get heated. Sometimes it may not. <laughs> it's just going to be what it is, but it's all for you guys. And it's just a passion. It's a thing we love. We love doing these things together and there's no better duo to do it. Like, like we do. And that's just facts. Uh, I couldn't agree more. It, I definitely, it's one of the things I don't want it to get heated because you and I can get heated, oh, yeah. but also, I mean, Hey, it might, it might make good, some good TV. So we'll, we'll find oh, yeah. out. I mean, like I said, dude, Stephen A. Smith and uh, Max Kellerman, that's, that's, that's all, all of the entertainment world. Come on now. All day. <laughs> so there's also something I want to talk to you guys. Now, normally I know back in the day, film capable has always been straight up live. So Due to a great boo-boo that I made, um, my live is a little out of commission for a little bit, but that's not going to stop us. And when that's back, live will resume. And trust me, that's going to open so many doors to so many more, to so much more potential on this show um, to bring you guys in, to involve you guys, to just make the scale even bigger, to have guests. It's the possibilities are endless with that, but for right now we're definitely running. What did you say? Yes, one one hundred percent. I also feel a small bit responsible because you did text me <laughs> and say, "Hey, do you think this will be all right?" And I didn't actually like check your stream. I just i <laughs> i missed i misinterpreted it a little bit that you were like, "Ah, oh, it's kind of showing in the mirror behind me," and I was like, "I don't know, that'd be fine." Oh, in the water, like, man. And you were like, oh, no, it was, you texted me, said, I just got a copyright strike. And I said, well, well how much was showing? You're like, oh, no, I was literally just showing it in a mirror. And I was like, oh, my. so I, I apologize to you, John, uh, to the fans of the night who were watching that stream and then just got that shit cut off. Uh, Cause that was a good ass stream, man. Like we had people showing up like it was going on. Right. Well, yeah. what, then you might realize that they could have been showing up to watch this free ass fight in a mirror. <laughs> <laughs> so you know copyright strike galore showing up but no i just i feel a little responsible because you texted me i want to say i was streaming and you texted me and i was like you're streaming and i was like oh my gosh i felt so so bad but uh you know hey we'll, we'll, we'll make this work we're, we're uploading these videos <laughs> weekly it'll be great and uh you know what we will have our live streaming back soon enough Yes, we shall. So for those of you watching our schedule for this will be, we're filming this, as you know, on a Tuesday. You guys won't see this till Wednesday. 
So that which makes the official release of Film Cave Live, well, Film Cave, I have to get used to saying that now, um, all Wednesdays. Um, so we all know that's how the structure works, live editing, you know the gist. Um, so yeah, so I think we pretty much got all the details out the way. I think uh, it's time to nerd some shit up. That, that's, that's what I'm here for. <laughs> yes, sir. So do you want to introduce our first segment of the evening? What do we got? What's it called? Talk to him. Okay. So the first segment of the show is called Out There in the World. And uh, this is a segment where basically we take the time to talk about what's happening outside of film. Uh, you know, John and I, obviously big, you know, nerds in terms of, you know, all that kind of stuff. But we like other things too. So sports, personal things, uh, video games, music, uh, you know, those, that's really where the possibilities are endless. We can talk about um, a ton of different things. And uh, funny enough, I will admit that we do have a topic in this that is film related, but it's just it's not necessarily our experience. So we're keeping it out of it, uh, out of our main uh, headlines. But mm. this, this is kind of our, you know, all around. Let's talk about what we're interested in uh, that's happened this week. Yes, indeed. So do we want to want to start off with the misses and kind of run from there? We can definitely do that if you'd like to start there. I'd say we can start there. So, Wonder Woman, she's out there apparently giving out what her name entails, wonder to the world. Um, reviews are in, mostly, uh, not all. So the internet got a little uh, preview as to what to expect when she comes out on Christmas, Christmas Day, right? They changed the date yeah. for? Yes. And apparently majority I'm pretty positive. What do you think about that? You know, it gets me, it gets me excited because this is what COVID has done is made movies that I was incredibly excited for almost, you know, feel old. It's like, man, you know, I was excited for that. It's tough to stay that way. Something like Black Widow, Eternals being pushed way far back, James Bond and Wonder Woman is definitely in that. Um, so it's yeah. really nice to hear people saying, you know, it's worth the wait, you know, thank God forbid it would be a movie that we finally get and it's bad, you know, yeah. so it's, it's nice that it's good. And from what I heard, it really is, you know, the first Wonder Woman was this way as well. And, uh, and I like it where they kind of do the, you know, old school Superman movies feel where it just, it's made to make you feel good. I and that. that Love yeah, Donald. and that that is something that we definitely need, and uh, I would appreciate uh, at this time, you know, getting to go see an awesome movie, and uh, you know, walking out of the theater or your home living room uh, because of you know the HBO Max thing, and uh, you know, be, being happy that I got to watch it because what although I really liked Tenet, um, I got to see it in theaters. It was Christopher Nolan at his absolute just you know take the reins and throw them over. Um, but it, it wasn't the movie for COVID because you walk out of it and you're like, what did I even just watch? And normally that would be okay. Cause it would come out in the middle of the summer. You had one woman the week, two weeks before, and you got black widow coming up and you're just seeing these crazy movies. Mm -hmm. But you know, to just have that movie dumped on us was a little jarring uh, for a lot of people. And so I think that reviews and box office definitely took a hit just simply for that reason, let alone the fact that it was pretty much dead in the middle of COVID time. Uh, but Wonder Woman 84, I'm I'm very happy that people are liking it and it gets me excited to finally see this thing. Right. It's, I'll say I'm happy too. Um, I honestly didn't expect a, a bad movie, like a shit film uh, under the helm of Patty Jenkins. I was, of course, worried about the third act. I didn't yeah. read into full details. I don't know if they even yeah. went into all of that, but I'm hoping that's not the case again um, when it comes to that. Um, because two thirds of that film was like fucking oh rock hard. Right. Yeah. Um, but then it just lost its footing at the end. So I'm I'm really hoping that that doesn't happen uh, throughout this. But it's positively. I don't want to say overwhelming, but it's 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 great to hear that it's doing so good and that people actually enjoyed it, right. um, and that just opens the doors for Wonder Woman three. 
which yep. they're already slightly talking about, but that's a conversation for another time. It is. <laughs> All right. So what stood out to you that you want to talk about? Anything, you know, that's caught your eye that you kind of want to slip in? What's going on? Talk to me. Well, you know, the other big aspect that you and I, I wouldn't necessarily necessarily call it bonding, but uh, you and I, you know, talk to about is, uh, is the NBA. And, uh, you know, I can't call it bonding because we don't we don't really see eye to eye on most. But uh, I just caught that setup. I was like, wait, what? Oh, yeah, yeah. But I do think that we'll see eye to eye on some things because uh, you could still possibly be uh, expecting a new teammate over there at the Nets. He might be going to the 76ers, or he could just suck it up and uh, stay down here in the humid piece of shit that is Houston. Uh, and that's James Harden, you know, showing up late. To training camp, going to the strip club, throwing out singles. Uh, was late. You know, I didn't show up at all. Uh, oh, he showed up today. Oh, okay. uh, he fi- he finally showed up. He got tested, okay. so he hasn't actually got to play yet. Which I don't even know if they all if they have, but I think they have. Um, mm-hmm. But he showed up late, um, and even to the point of I know that the the coach said all I know is that he's here. He's like I haven't talked to him. That's all I really know. You can tell that the coach. Uh, honestly could care less if he stays, you know, I mean, he, coach kind of is done with him. Um, so that's going to be a, just a dysfunctional, you know, scene the whole year. People are going to be talking about it like crazy, but I wanted to know what, what you think about that and you know what your nets are doing. Cause I, I don't know if you also heard about what Kyrie's up to with the media, but, uh, but that, these are your guys. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay. First Harden. Uh... Keep his ass somewhere else. Don't need him on the nets. Don't bring your dirty ass beard over here. Stay away. <laughs> we don't need you because all you're going to do is legitimately. <sighs> KD, he can share the ball. He doesn't need to be like, oh, unless, it's, unless people are fucking up. He's like, all right, give me the damn ball. <laughs> um, Kyrie, he needs the ball. Um, Harden needs the ball um and he's a big ass diva about it he's egotistical he's completely iso um regardless of his assist stats i give a flying fuck knuckle sandwich this man is complete iso that's all his game is and then when we need him or when you need him i don't need him when you need him and like general consensus he never shows the hell up playoffs disappears every time yeah so I'm not trying to have my nets because my warriors are already down for the fucking count. And that's the that's that, shit I want to see them yeah. too. Um, bringing you into this when we're trying to get somewhere within our first year is going to be detrimental. Now that puts us bad because it's also pissing me off that literally every single team in this bitch is making strong ass moves. And the nets are just sitting there like, yeah, do something, please. Like, our squad isn't shit. No. It's not. I won't say that. We got a deep bench. We have good players. We got some sharpshooters. Um, but we 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 need that third, like, er. Yeah, DeAndre's not that guy. Yeah. You know, no. DeAndre Jordan's not going to be that third. Yeah. He, can, he can put in some work, whatever, but we need, like, certified. But, um, I mean, y'all did make the playoffs last year. So that that is something that, you know, but without KD, with kind of a Kyrie, y'all... Yeah, where their forces kick people out like, yeah, you guys suck, you guys suck, you guys suck. This is a remainder. Do it. It was yeah. kind of like a yeah. force thing. I know. Um, but you, you, have, you have a lot of potential over like there. You did not have a shit team. But, <clears throat> um, but uh, yeah. yeah, so it's... And Kyrie don't even get... This, this man, I, just shut up, bro. That's He's, just... Just shut up. I, I, don't, I don't hate <laughs> Kyrie. I, re, I really... I, I mean... He's he's awesome. He's a phenomenal player. I still I think that he has the best handles we've ever seen. Some oh, people put AI yeah. over him, but I I would go with Kyrie because um, AI honestly is more of a two guard. Um, when you actually go back and look at him, he was just so small that they he had to be point guard. But um, yeah, Kyrie yeah, brings and, Rockets to the fucking NBA. <laughs> yeah, and uh, and you know so. I like him. He's bringing a lot of drama saying, Hey, I'm not doing any press. You know, y'all like to construe my stuff. It's like, Hey, how about you come out 
tell that to the press and speak Construed. very, you know, diligently. Um, and instead he's just saying, no, I'm not going to deal with it. Um, and then the other thing is, I, I know I, but that's, he, he wants to be a drama guy and that that's caused problems in the past. But, um, and then when it comes to Harden and you guys, it was one of those things where I was sitting there going, I hope Brooklyn's dumb enough to send half their squad to Houston for James Harden so that y'all just absolutely eat shit. No. And my, oh. and so that way I don't have to worry about y'all. I can just worry about the Bucks and the and the Clippers, um, but uh, you know, it, it was, so it was stupid, this, bro. But uh, it's it was terrible because it's one of those things that if it happens, and the same thing with the 76ers, Although I do think the 76ers could fit better with him. Uh, yeah, go over there. It, I don't give a shit. Right, you know. and because uh, they're not, they're never going to do anything with that squad. With Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons, they're never going to do anything, no matter how hard you try. Yeah. Um, and so bringing Harden could fit better with them, but if he went to the Nets, it would just be no. absolutely detrimental. It and would. And Tony is at the Nets. He don't want your ass right, again. Right. No. He ab- <laughs> absolutely. He was. Like, you know. He would sit there and go, "Are you kidding me? Like I just left this guy. He got me right. fired." Um, and even yeah. to the point of like, "Oh, you still want to trade?" And we got rid of Russell Westbrook. You know, bringing in John Wall down there, which I now I just feel bad for John Wall. I did feel bad for Russell Westbrook. Um, because now you got two guys that are kind of very similar now on the on the Wizards with Westbrook and uh and Bradley Beal, and so I just I the whole situation is because of James Harden, and it really sucks because he he's an uh, an amazing player, but it's because he has he is literally what people used to make fun of Kobe for being. Like he is the ball hog. I got to have the ball kind of thing. When like Kobe used to run the triangle, it's when you put him on a team with nobody on it that he said, Hey, let, give me the freaking ball. Like right. there, nobody else is going to score. Get, let me have it. Uh, yeah. Whereas you've got, you know, the, the Rockets should have done something. And I'm interested to see what happens, especially with DeMarcus Cousins. Uh, I think it'd be pretty funny if we hear Forgot that he was on that shit. Yeah. And I, I think it'd be funny if we hear that DeMarcus Cousins just absolutely just, punch the shit out of James Harden in a practice or something. I want to see that. <laughs> and, uh, but you know, it, it'll, it'll, be, it'll be interesting. But for your sake, I hope that no moves are made in that sense. Um, so I just, yeah, I no. wanted to bring that up to you. Um, also just how weird this is going to be with, you know, this is a very short off season for the, the people that made the finals and all that. Very I'm, short. So uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be a weird season because they're gonna try to travel this time too. So we'll just see we'll see what happens. But yeah, time to earn your stripes now. Nah! But that's yep. a conversation for another time. But um, <laughs> but so keep it in the world of sports, uh, real quick with this. Um, we have another Paul trying to uh, throw some hands in the ring, and he got Mayweather. <laughs> Yeah. Out of all people, just to throw a fucking nickel down the hallway or whatever the fuck that analogy is, he <laughs> hit it right on the head, and he got Mayweather. Like, this is ridiculous. And it's actually funny because I was watching the first take, and Stephen A. Smith brought up a really good point, actually. I think Mayweather is fighting the wrong Paul. Yes, Logan Paul has more of the followers, but right yeah. now, Jake Paul's kind of hot shit. Yeah, because and who was the first person that fucking Jake Paul called out when the fight was over? Mayweather. So it's like that's who you should have went for. Keep that trend kind of going. But I guess Logan Paul was like, oh, my brother is more famous than me now or whatever. And tried to figure something out. I don't I hate them both. But it's just ridiculous. There's another exhibition match, and it's just another one of these just throw a celebrity in fight. It's another bullshit reason for Mayweather to still act like, oh, I'm the best, undefeated. I'm going to keep fighting people that's not experienced to way past their prime. And I'm just like, uh, I'm just I'm just over you, bro. But yeah, well, what do you think? What do you think? So, so my first thought is Mayweather even accepting this brings his legacy down. Uh, you know, like, why do you, why do you care? You were undefeated boxing the best boxers in the world. Like at a certain point of time. Yes. Uh, well, at, at least they're boxers, you know, not 
they don't they don't just sh- make videos um, and box on the side. Um, yeah, you know, so it's yeah. like, you know, they've got endorsement deals for boxing instead of you know YouTube. But um, and then yeah, also it's the idea of having Jake Paul if you were gonna do it, having Jake Paul be the guy that you fight makes sense because who was the only person that didn't talk straight shit about Nate Robinson online after he got knocked out. And that was Mayweather. Mayweather jumped on there and said, Hey, you know, brother, I I love you. I hope you're okay. All these people talking down on you, which it was the weirdest thing ever. Cause it's like, man, he just got absolutely knocked out by this guy that he shouldn't have. But, um, so, you know, when it comes to this fight, I, I don't pay for these fights. I've, I never have, um, it's one of those things I would just, I, especially these, I was never expecting to see a clip online of like, Oh, he, Nate Robinson just got knocked out. Mm. And I, I'm sitting there like, as soon as I saw it, you know, being an NBA guy, I was like, no, are you kidding me? Like, of course. Like, and I saw people were like, man, like Nate, what'd you just do to the NBA community? And like, I, like Evan Turner was Turner was like, let me fight him. Like, cause Pretty embarrassing. You, you also, you also fought the small, one of the smallest, you know, good NBA players we've ever had. Right. Um, so like bring, yeah, bring Evan Turner in. I don't know. He's a, he's an okay basketball player and he's, he will light you up Jake Paul. Um, so, you know, that's yeah. just the point of it. So um, <laughs> like he I mean, out of the fucking whole yard of pit bulls, he picked the one pump random and was like that one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, or, or you go for somebody that's a little older and still get destroyed. Like, have Ron Artest show up and be like, "Hey, what's up, man?" Like, I've I fought fans before. Them. Like, <laughs> I, I've I, I've absolutely destroyed some people in the stands. Right, so, I'm not new to this. Hey, you know, like, I'm not, uh, yeah, no, which didn't God. he elbow the shit? Was he elbowed James Harden? Didn't he? He surely did. Right in yeah, his jaw. Maybe, Maybe that's what messed him up. Um, like whole like cock back. And was yeah, like, yeah. I, yeah. Okay, I remember that. But uh, no, when it comes to Mayweather, it's one of those things. It's like I don't know why you're stepping down to this level because th- you you're go. not, you're not. But you're not going to get anything positive from this. Only thing that can happen is that you lose, and you are the be- biggest <laughs> laughing stock uh, in the history of anything, any sport ever. If he gets knocked out, he loses. It's a wrap. <laughs> game over. Like literally, it is. Oh, it is oh, absolutely wow. game over. And I would almost guarantee you that it's in the contract that says, unless I get knocked out, I win this fight. Like the there, there's no decision I'm here. Sure. If I'm if I'm standing, I do not lose for the simple fact of you know I'm undefeated. So it. it it makes me not want to watch it, but it's also like, man, can, I have you, imagine, to watch it if, if, can you imagine if Logan Paul just got one lucky ass shot in? But it's the same thing we said about Conor McGregor. That's all we said. Conor, Conor's quick. Conor can do this. Conor can do that. If he gets one shot, you know, if he decides to bring in some MMA and just throws a roundhouse kick and like, you know, he'll, <laughs> he'd get disqualified, but be, it'd be insane. It would be. Uh, I wanted him to kick him that entire. I was like, just, just, yeah. just I don't give a fuck. Just kick him. Just, <laughs> exactly. Just, <laughs> just, just, you know, just just get time. him in the leg. Just do a leg kick one time mm-hmm. and watch his ass crumble. And yes. then everybody will go, okay, boxing is a sport, but fighting is a different story. And we know who would win that. Uh, right. Yep. So, it's, and, and know, shit, it's maybe, maybe, maybe Logan Paul could do something like that and say, you know what? Like, I'm going to have my chance. I'm gonna pick his ass up and throw him. You know, because he's not, like, he's not a little guy. And yeah, he could do it. He's stupid. He's showing he's, dead bodies yeah. on YouTube. Yeah. So I mean, he could do it and say, "Screw it, man! I won't take any of the money." He makes plenty of money. Right? Why not? Yeah, it's it's. Uh, Lord, I shouldn't be hyping this fight up, but could be exciting. Listen, this is the state of the world we live in right now. So it's what can we even possibly do at this moment? Is what it is. Yep. All right. So you got everything you needed to out the way that you want to talk about? I think so. I'm ready to get into these other big topics. Yes, sir. So we, y'all, we have quite the topics for you guys today. A lot has dropped. I want to say a lot. 
I mean, as of today, a lot <laughs> drops uh, because it was pretty quiet. But then, thankfully, the movie gods blessed us with some really, really big news. But before we get into that, again, we personally thank you guys for joining us um, and watching along uh, this video on playback, of course. And hey, listen, hit that subscribe button. It's real simple. You see a little subscribe. button down there? Right there. So you could be we're, and the we're notification doing, we're doing this every Yeah, we're doing this every week. And at mm -hmm. some point, hopefully soon, you can ask questions to us live and we can incorporate you guys. It could be a whole, you know, take it to the next level. You just got to ride with us. Oh, absolutely. Get you on the show. Be like, like everything. It. Like, yeah. tune in. And we have a lot more coming outside of Film Cave. So you won't be disappointed. Yeah. So, because <laughs> you know why? This is the way. You see what oh. I did there? See what I did sounds, there? <laughs> sounds like you're leading into something. <laughs> sounds like a segue. And yes, it was. <laughs> that was so corny, but it was oh, worth God. it. If they it subscribe, was, they just they just definitely unsubscribe. They changed their mind immediately. I was like, ah, oh, oh, okay, no. yeah, yep, yeah, nope. Mandalorian <laughs> so of, guys, all right, fuck it. Damn it, I'm a nerd. I'm corny. I'm proud of it. Mandalorian drops last week, and boy, it was an episode. That it was, say the least, one that definitely had my pants wet, but. From what I'm hearing, we don't share the same thoughts and opinions, sir. Okay, don't so hurt now, your neck. You have to explain <laughs> yourself. Yeah, I okay. know. I'm sure. So, so, so yes, go. Please take it away. Take it away. So the episode's called The Tragedy, but it's mm -hmm. the Boba Fett episode. Um, and bringing back Boba Fett, I got I to gotta admit, for the most part, you know, Boba Fett was a character that I remember like everybody was obsessed with him. And I, I watched star Wars and I'm like, I don't see why, you know, he has this cult following cause he never actually does anything that crazy on screen. And he just dies at the beginning of return of the Jedi. And so I did. Yeah. And I did see one thing that was like, I'm pretty sure after seeing this Mando episode that day on Tatooine 40 years ago, uh, Boba was high as shit. <laughs> and you know got you know th that was a wake-up call Baby, like, he was just drunk. Him. yeah he was drunk he was high he got he almost died barely got out of that sarlacc pit and he lived a life of badassery mm. after that and yep. uh, and and honor kind of um you know so it's uh it's kind of funny i liked that but this episode i i want to start by saying it's not Robert Rodriguez's fault. The director, he's a great director. I like him. Um, but I did read that he got brought into that episode last minute. Last minute. The, pa the It was only 19 pages of a script. He said, that's why I added a ton of action because it was, you know, the script was very small. Um, and my biggest problem with it is the logic behind the episode um, and the, uh, and the script, I mean, the, what these people are saying frustrates me beyond belief. Uh, so I did, I did write down a few, a, a few lines that were said because, because you really enjoyed this episode. You just think it's great. I loved it. So, oh, that's, that's the hell of a, a hell of a lot. Um, so Don't yeah, worry. before you get into that, I'm going to just Please. spit a little two cents and then we're just gonna, I, I'll, I'll go, I'll come back at you. Yes. So Look to me, he's so happy. Right. <laughs> this episode was so amazing. And because, and I, I saw your tweet. I saw some of, you know, the things that you were talking about. And the reason why I love this episode, because from what I gathered, for what they showed, they knew exactly what it was. It was an episode that was trying to do much. It was something very simple, straight to the point, is what it is. Get you a Tython. Here you go. Here's a rock. Sit your ass down. Call out to somebody. Here we go. Oh, here comes this motherfucker. All right. Got it. I'm a stall while you do this. Make it work. Like it was very simplistic in. Eventually get story. him naked. And yeah. So it's. <laughs> and that's what I liked about it because that 
whole episode was nothing but just a meme of just collective orgasmic action and badassery where we had the redemption to Boba Fett from, yeah. you know, what we know him from. Right. And there was so much nostalgia from quotes to seeing him eventually in, you know, the armor itself, completely just kicking ass. Oh my God. Um, and I feel like we had a good dimension for uh, the Mandalorian for what we've seen brief snippets because we actually got more emotion out of him. We've seen this motherfucker laugh for the first time. I was like, whoa, emotion. Yeah. Here we go. Bonding. Um, and the rest was just pure action. I'm going to give you great Star Wars. And that's what I loved. If we tried to do all of that while hammering in so much of a story, it would have lost me. Um, but I feel like it was very direct, short, knew what it wanted to do, and just executed. Yeah, so, what, what you're saying, what you're saying is not untrue whatsoever. I will admit the opening where he's like, "Man, you're special, kid." Like you're like that. That whole scene was awesome, and it made total sense because he's getting taken at the end. Um, but the the thing that frustrated me was the 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 main part that frustrated me was the dialogue where they all meet up for the first time and it's you know hey give me the armor it's like okay cool you know whatever but the point is he's like hey give me the armor or my friend is going to shoot your friend and mando just tried to touch his friend and got shot 20 feet back from a force field and so yeah. Mando's like, you should say, go right ahead. Do you not see the glowing blue tube around him? You can't get mm -hmm. through it. I just tried. So, and I, the, the defense of that is he doesn't know if a gun can get through it. Sure. So just to continue off that. Um, awesome. Yeah, I know. So, <laughs> I'm ready. Uh, so what Mando says is point the gun away from the kid or I'll drop you both. And, and Boba says, let's all put our guns down. And he's like, tell her to put, tell her to drop the gun. And he says, after you drop the jet pack. So it's like all of a sudden the jet pack's thrown into this. And everybody's like, oh, you got to take away the high ground. He'll have the high ground. It's like, okay, well, Fennec is on the high ground. If, if Mando was going to take off flying, she doesn't miss. And she's up there already. She's got how long for him to get up to her height that she can just light him up. Anyway, he's not going to uh, feel it or be affected by it. Well, but it's yeah, a sniper. Right, cool. If he could get dinked by uh, Gideon in the finale of season one, that's what I don't understand. Is he got he would have died in the finale? Mm. I don't know where that came from. They kind of just said, "Uh." Anyway, I, I think he got him when he like bent down or some shit. I'm just trying to think. Logically. Yeah, no, I, you might be right. You might be right. Yeah. Um, but he's like, after you put the jetpack down. Okay, he takes the jetpack off, which is what pisses me off, The kind of. But then the weird thing is the logic goes out the door because it's like, hey, drop your weapons. So Mando puts his blaster and just holsters it. Boba didn't even have his gun out. He takes it off his back and puts it on the ground. Mm -hmm. And then Finnick puts her gun on her back like Boba just had his. So all three are doing something different. All three, <laughs> you know, two still have their guns. One that the the one that wasn't using a gun put it on the ground. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. uh, and then what pissed me off the most, and this is what I was talking about when you said you're taking your glasses off so you can emote. Look at me. Look at the camera, like you saw a ghost right now. Right now. Yeah. Like, uh, oh. What would you if you saw a ghost right now? What would you like, do? I'm like, oh shit! Like. Yeah. Exactly. Like, yeah, so you're so Fennec looks at Mando and says, "You look like you've seen a ghost." He's got a <laughs> fucking helmet on. He's got a helmet on. Really? Face. <laughs> and th that's the thing is like, that's that should not be in a script for the Mandalorian. You look like you've seen a ghost. It's like really because I have my tongue sticking out. You have <laughs> no idea. Uh, she was going by the act of just speechless, like him saying like Fennec and then just kind of just like rocking, watching her as she came down. She's just going off emote. Could have said, you think you've seen a ghost? You know, like you feeling like you see a ghost? 
not you look like you've seen a ghost. I f- I've seen somebody see a ghost and you look like them. It's body language. The um, Mando is I, so, so I, it, it's a bad script. It's like bad wording. But the big point that I that pisses me off is then the Empire shows up. Boba bends down, picks his gun up. Fennec takes hers off. This I can agree with. Turns around and runs straight up a 90 degree hill. <laughs> and waves his jetpack on what the ground. jetpack sitting right there. Yeah. And it's like, I get it if you're trying to say, oh, he cares so much about the kid that he forgot about the jetpack. But yes, it's he's a Mandalorian warrior. His first, he sh- the first thing he should have tried was to just take off flying and realize he doesn't have his jetpack on. But you can't. It's not that because, and this is where I hit towards the progression of. Mando, because before the child, he would have done all that shit. Yeah, yeah. He would have been like, boom, boom, react first, react first, react first. We've seen him throughout the course of this season let each guard down to share Noob, to question his own beliefs, to embrace yeah. more emotions, caring, feeling, to where he isn't his pro- only priority anymore. So it's not just him just to act like, oh shit, people are here, let me go whoop somebody's ass, because it's just him. He could do that yeah. inst- instinctively, but now he's like, he's a dad essentially. So oh, I was yeah. like, yeah, I was out to my kid. Like that's the only, the first thing I'm going out to right now is that's the first thing on my mind. Get to my kid. Um, and when shit happens like that, sometimes logic isn't always there. It's just to react. And, and I actually, and that's kind of where I see it. It frustrated me too. Cause I said in a envelope, I was like, where's your fucking jetpack? Yeah. But at the same time, I was like, this makes sense to his, Development and growth, because just like uh, Ahsoka, Ahsoka said with you know Grogu and just the overwear of the Jedi, like your attachments that yeah. can lead you open to shit. That's just like you're not gonna think logically, you're not gonna think straight. Your people can get the best of you, guard all of that. Um, so it's that's kind of where I chalked it up to in that regard. Um, but yeah, you chopped that shit up. I didn't. I didn't think any. <laughs> Of that nature, like that, like some of the lines I get, I would call the script overall horrible because of a few lines. Well, no, so it's not. It's, that's why I more so want to just call it like the logic of the of the literal script on paper that sh- that is also just descriptions. Because like talking about the logic of like, okay, you left your jetpack because you're a father and you're freaking out, but like, you know, okay, he gets in the force field. Boba Fett shows up. Let me go grab him. I get shot back 20 feet. Okay. Mm-hmm. Let me go try again. You just tried. It's not going to work. He tries four times to walk into the force field and grab him. And I'm like, what are you, what are you doing? And after one of them, he's knocked Anakin. out for after <laughs> one of them, he's knocked out for like a full 15 yeah. minutes. Um, but then the other thing that did frustrate, frustrate me a little bit was you brought Boba Fett back. Bad ass scene when he first of all just him using like his Samoan stuff that he was talking about in in that interview where he like brought brought his own culture uh Tamura did and you know beat people up like a motherfucker and then he goes and gets the armor and absolutely like you see that uh uh the Tim Timothy Oliphant from the first episode didn't even know how to use it you know like and so like when he punches that guy and like shoots him back I was like punch oh my god God, this is awesome. And then yes. they decide like, oh, hey, we're missing a little something. We Boba Fett should be making jokes. And it's like, what? Who 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 great? Who said this? But, and really? So no, the but the point is, this is where this is what pisses me off. Timothy Oliphant used the rocket on his back like a badass the day he got the armor. Locked mm. on, shot the People killed it. It was an awesome scene. It was kind of a mirror to the scene that we are about to get. He shoots him, turns around slow motion, it blows up. But before you say anything, what pissed me off, because they didn't have to do this, was he locks on to the lower ship Mm -hmm. and gets lucky by hitting the further ship and they go into him. And then he's like, hey, nice shot. And he's like, I was aiming at the other one. Why? Could have just had Boba Fett continue to be a badass, but no. Let's just let him 
Like, oh, he was he knew all this shit about his armor, but then oh, he's got a little rust from that 40 years with the with the rocket on top. But the other guy didn't. And it just I was just like, who thought of this? Like, yeah, he just shooting Kyle was just shooting that one thing. Just one. So was, no need Boba, to like, so was Boba and he missed it. There was two things. I don't know how to explain it, that. It I locked remember. on. But, <laughs> okay. It's a subtle, it's a it's to bring levity. It's a joke. I don't think but, so, but it's meant to be that deeply. What's funny though, what what actually could have been funny if you wanted him to say a joke is him aim at the further one, hit the further one, it falls into it exactly how he wants, and he's like, hey, nice shot. And he says, I was actually aiming for the other one. We know he's lying, but he's making a joke like, oh, I'm not a badass. You know, like that could have been awesome. Like, oh, I didn't mean to fucking destroy both of them. Like, I know exactly what I was doing. You know, Listen, I thought that shit was still badass. No, it Joe looked awesome. Happen or not. It, the, that was the, amazing. The scene was awesome. And, the, yeah. and the, the only other thing that pissed me off at the end was obviously Mando has no jetpack, um, but whatever. It's, oh my God, they blew up the fucking Razor Crest. Exactly what I was about to say. <laughs> so the shot blows up the Razor Crest. Oh. And Mando immediately looks up and his helmet looks through the clouds and you see the Imperial warship. And then a whole thing happens where Boba goes and flies and he's in the clouds and he comes out and it's a, it's a reveal of, oh, it's a warship. And they're, everybody's in disbelief. And it's like we as an audience and Mando knows we just saw that. And so it was like a directing issue where I was like, why is there a double reveal here? Like Mando could have been I mean, running with Fennec and going, it's a fucking empire. Like it's there. It's huge. And, but we've and seen so, that ship in prior episodes. So it's not really a reveal. Uh, well, no, but like, it, cause Boba's like, they're back. They're, they're actually back. And Fennec's like, there's no way. And he's like, I'm looking at it with my own eyes. And, and Mando's like, oh, I looked with my helmet when they first shot. I've known for t- for three minutes, and it's just it was just one of those things. Like, it the script could have been a lot tighter, and I f- sound like I'm complaining. I don't do this for every episode, um, but this episode it it was such an uh, it was such an important one. Um, so I it frustrated me because you could tell, like you said at the beginning, this was supposed to be a simple episode. It had three things to do. Get him, get Grogu on the rock, reveal Boba Fett and make him badass, and get Grogu taken by the Empire. That was the three things. And as a director being brought in last minute, that is rough. Um, oh, yeah. But I think that the directing, I think that the script could have been tighter, could have been, you know, the and coming off of last week's episode, the quality of it, I think also. I mean, look at you. Yeah, clean your pants. You can yeah. you can take a break if you need to. Yeah. Uh, but you, see, you you and I see eye to eye on that one, um, and it's just, I this one was it was a letdown for me because it it somehow oh, brought Boba Fett back in an word. awful way, but it still let me down. It was it was a slight disappointment from the episode prior, but I'm glad that you enjoyed it because it it. I will admit that it was on on par with something like Fast and Furious movies or something. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm not. I'm not. I'm just gonna kind of know that was just sort of way of shade, and I'm not. All right. So we're we're gonna move on from that. Let's do it because you <laughs> see, Merrick, He knows how to he knows how to hit my buttons. I wish you to say, and uh, all right, shaking. <laughs> yeah, it was it was a lot, but um, but over I I love the Mandalorian. This this season is amazing compared to the other ones. So for people that oh, yeah. haven't watched my reviews or anything, I don't hate it. I just disliked that episode more than most. So don't oh. hate me. God damn, more than most. Okay, <laughs> all right. Um, so yeah, so yeah, that I love the episode. You had your thoughts on it. Um, and yeah. Let, me know, let us know what you guys thought in the comment sections below. Um, if you loved it, did you hate it? Did you just, you know, jump into it for nostalgic purposes? What what was it for you? Um, oh, God. Grogu, he's gone. It's okay. going to be badass to see him get him back. Let's, I'll say oh, that. It is. that yeah. I'm so ready for that fight between Mando and Gideon, between the Darksaber and the yeah. Beskar staff. Oh, my God. Just, just, just knowing, like in the Ahsoka episode, we learned that that Beskar 
stops lightsabers could be oh, awesome. Yeah, we've been to that. Uh, Even back to like yeah. the, the originals. Uh, could be awesome to yeah. watch that it's, fight. It's going to be amazeballs. It's, yeah, I can't wait. And hopefully we get more dark uh, troopers because that was, yeah. they look a little bit too terrifyingly badass just to have that one little, you know, snap and grab, whatever you want to call it. They look very CG, but I would have liked them to have been practical, but that's okay. They did look a little CG, but did, God damn it. They, it, they played their purpose. It was, it was great. They, their purpose was there. Yes, purpose was served. All right, so next topic. And this is something me and you are kind of iffy about, not so sure about, and how, or just why. <laughs> or just why. And Kingsman, which is no longer so much of a secret in its service, is giving out or is planning seven more damn films Good why group. like why so i'm gonna do us a favor here i'm gonna pull up the article here talking about it please which i'm doing here at superhero hype we got going on here so oh, several more kingsman movies and a tv series excuse me goodness and that's what we need but first of all, while I look for grab these tidbits, what do you think overall about the Kingsman franchise? Does it deserve what? Like, is this overkill? Like, what do you feel? From what we as an audience have seen so far, I would say it's overkill. Um, mm -hmm. The first Kingsman, I honestly think is kind of a, it, I think it might be a perfect, you know, it's like 10 out of 10. It's, it's amazing. Talk about one of those that you walk into and it surprises the hell out of you. And it's not only good that first time, it's good every time you watch it. It's hilarious. Action's amazing. Matthew Vaughn kills it. Yeah. Uh, and that is why when the second Kingsman came out, it was one of my most anticipated of that year. The trailers, I was losing it for them. And I was very let down by that one. I thought the quality went way down. You know, yeah, at, everything about it was just dis more disappointing uh, than the last and obviously had big shoes to fill, but I, I thought that they, they really could have done a better job. Um, and then obviously we haven't seen the prequel movie yet. Thanks to COVID. Um, it looks good. It looks like it could be awesome, but so did Kingsman two, mm. uh, for me at least. So it's like, it, it's, it's tough, but planning this far ahead, it, it's an interesting move by the studio and by Matthew Vaughn, because if you invest so much into this, and the Kingsman prequel comes out and it's nobody likes it, you know, which I would hope that's not the case, but it is possible. Mm -hmm. um, all these plans are dead. And so it's just, it's a little, oh, uh, I'm sorry. yeah, uh, it's, it's a little, it's a little pre, uh, it's premature. Yeah. yeah. Um, but could they all be awesome after this point? Yes. I mean, there's, there's no reason for me to believe that they couldn't be, um, cause Matthew Vaughn has done many other things that are amazing. I still X-Men first class, uh, unbelievable. Loved it. Mm -hmm. Uh, very unique movie compared to what we had ever had before. And he knocked it out of the park and mm -hmm. obviously the first Kingsman. So kick ass, uh, kick ass. But yeah. So, I mean, he Not does great second. things. Exactly. See, so it's like you, you want him to do seven and he's done two bad sequels for two different franchises. Wait, I don't, I, to be fair, I don't think he did. He didn't direct it, but I think he wrote it too. Yeah. I can't remember for sure, but he definitely produced it. Uh, yeah. The, to but, me, it's the second, the second Kingsman had cool stuff and aspects about it, but just overall, I was like, eh, like it, it, like you said, coming from the first movie, we're having such praise and being so good and coming to this. It was like it felt like two completely different movies. I'm like, uh, this doesn't feel right. But so according to Deadline, uh, CEO of Marv Group, I could be chopping this up, so I am sorry. Zaigi Kamasa. Sounds great. To me. Right, I did my best. <laughs> uh, talking about and they mentioned, of course, uh, seven more films in addition to the TV series. We want to grow the business and the output. 
we have a Kingsman TV series in the works, and there are two to three other franchises that are being developed alongside the Kingsman world. That's interesting. It is. So it seems like that these seven aren't going to be all continuous. It seems like it's going to be like within the world that will have connections, but have be different within each film or at least a few of them. Like a few may connect, a few may go to a different aspect, but still be within the same world. So it looks like they're really trying to just build the franchise overall as a whole. And I mean, I don't, I don't hate this. Cause what, what that sounds like to me is the possibility they could be planning the King's man to have a trilogy, a prequel trilogy mm. and the Kingsman franchise to finish the trilogy and have spinoffs, you know, uh, you know, so it, it's that they're trying to fill this out. I just see it as very premature. It's a, yeah. you know, but bo both movies made money. Um, yeah, but, but it's, it's very interesting to me that studios haven't learned that your movie can make money because your movie makes the amount of money it makes because of the one before it. Right. So yeah. Kingsman one was amazing. Mm -hmm. People showed up to see the second one. The second one could have made Pointed. more if it was great, but it wasn't. And it made it what it did. Now yeah. the King's man could be the best of the three and it will make less than them both pre COVID, you know, and now of course it's going to make a, I mean, a God awful number whenever it finally comes out compared to what it could, but that's just the world that we're living in. We have to kind of resituate our mindset there. But, um, so I just, I think it's premature, but also, I mean, confidence could be a good thing too. It, you know, you look at it, but also, I mean, we've had six transformers movies and we're going to have 11 fast and furious movies. So, um, uh, you know, I mean, it's it, it's a thing where confidence is good, but keep the quality up, please, is kind of where I'm at. Right. To be honest with you, I have not seen a single trailer to The King's Man yet. I just didn't oh, really? care. Yeah, and it's, yeah. And it's I don't because, mind it. right, it's just because of the second one, too. I'm just like, uh, the French, I'm over the franchise now. Like, it didn't do, I'm like, I just don't care. And I think, because this one is about Harry, right? Like a young Harry? No, it's before him. It's before it, who, the, who the fuck is it about? Who, uh, it's the first one. It's the first King's Man. You know, it's the people that start it. Uh, oh. oh, I guess. So is it supposed to be? Uh, it wasn't Christopher Plummer. Who was the old guy in who Michael ended up being bad? No, he was in the second one. The first Kingsman, who was the first head of the table. Michael Caine. No, he was in the. He was the, for the second one. Was he not? He was in the first one. Who was in the first one? He died in the first one. That's true. So what old fuck am I thinking about? That was, well, whatever. Then never mind. Not Michael Caine. I, I, know, I, I only saw Kingsman 2 like once because it was terrible. So. Yeah, it was. Yeah, okay. It was. Yeah, it was him. Okay, yeah. I got my old men mixed up. Um. So, okay. Yeah, see, I just don't care. Yeah, no, I, <laughs> I don't. I'm not knowing. I really don't. Yeah, see, it, that's point, point taken. So it's just like... Uh, it's whatever at this point. So, I mean, best of luck to them. The sure. best example that I figured studios would learn from at this point is the dark universe. That's the biggest thing. Just shooting your load off before you even can start. So yeah. it's just like, before the pants on it's like, uh, it's like, damn, you didn't even, okay, cool. Yeah. So that's what it seems like they're doing. Set up this whole universe without even the box office or the momentum to back you, it up. You as you cannot have that. You use the word that I was literally thinking of. You cannot have these kinds of plans with no momentum. Yeah. You have to do that. You, they are on, they are on the opposite of momentum. They're, they are trying to backpedal. <laughs> they're trying to get people back. That's not the time to say we're all, we're going all in. Cause that's how thing, that's how bad movies happen. Um, so I'm right there with you. I mean, King, I, I will tell you to watch a trailer for the King's man. Cause it, it is, uh, it feels like the first wonder woman in terms of the time period. Like it's old school. You're like, the costumes are cool. And you're like, 
these are people with muskets basically and it's like but they have they some of them have some cool tech and it's okay. like oh wow like they're okay like they, they you know they have a ring that can do something that no one else has you know they don't because this is the old time so it's kind of it could be cool but it also could be absolute garbage so fair enough touche i'll i'll give it the benefit of the doubt i'll go yeah. and i'll look you've changed my mind about things well, two, two and a half minutes is a lot better than two and a half hours to waste so try the trailer if you hate it fuck them that is, that, oh yeah that's that is true i have no problem saying that <laughs> so all right so that's our coverage on kingsman not a lot to kind of go off of with that one um not really a huge story just a really surprising one yeah um so so from that to something that is some pretty big ass news yeah, which one of the goats had something to say about, which I have not read a single thing of yet, so I'm interested to do that. Um, and that is HBO Max. They're getting some uh, huge backlash, and I personally feel they deserve every single bit of it. Um, that's just me. I've been very vocal since this whole COVID shit from the very beginning about putting these mainstream ass films in, you know, streaming service platforms that just do not belong. And it's, it's so undeniably frustrating to me because it's like, I miss the theater. I direly miss the theater. Right now, people are in studios are panicking. They're saying, oh, we're not making money this quarter. At the end of this quarter, we're panicking, panicking, panicking. You took a loss. It's a fucking wrap. Get over yeah. it. Yep. Go to next year. Wait your ass. Sit down somewhere. Have a drink. And then when shit starts getting a little better, put movies back in the theaters again. Start rolling them out. Shit is what it is at this point. You're diminishing the quality of film. You're diminishing its purpose. You're diminishing its experience. You are truly just undercutting what film is all about by taking a movie like, like here, doing The Matrix 4, Mortal Kombat, coming to HBO Max along with the entire WB 2021 slate. What the fuck? So you mean to tell me I have to watch Dune on my fucking home screen on a yeah. couch? What? <laughs> have you not seen what that movie looks like and is going to be? And I got to watch it at home. I think it's utterly, I think it's utterly fucking ridiculous. Um, let's see. Let me just try to grab some quotes here before uh, I'll let you go. I know you have a lot to say about it as well. Uh, let's see. So with that, so they're making 17 of its theatrical release That's movies. A lot. That's a hell of a lot. So many. That's a hell of a lot. And let me see if they have the full list down here. I see some of it up here. Oh, they, they yeah. do. There some go. of them. So, oh my God, Godzilla versus Kong. Um, okay, Godzilla versus Kong, The Suicide Squad, The Conjuring, the which I can give a fuck about. Sure, I can watch that at home. I don't some care. of some of these movies can work on the small screen. So. Right. The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It. Sure, The Devil Made You Put Everything on HBO height, Max. Judas and the Black Messiah. Right. Mortal Kombat, which at this point to me isn't even a fucking film. This is the worst marketed advertised major film ever in life. Yeah. Like this movie has been out for like 20 years now and not a goddamn still, not a still, not a teaser, not a nothing. So uh, it is what it is. Wait, what are you uh, talking about? Mortal, Mortal Kombat. <laughs> the old one? <laughs> no, the new one. Well, yeah, but it's supposed to come out in like what? Six weeks or something? Horrendous? It's supposed to come out uh, soon. Yeah, and it's been made for how fucking... And yeah, long out, right. and not a single, not a still, not a picture, not a teaser, not a I'm, word. I'm a, interested to see if they are going to push it. You know, because they have to, they have to start their marketing machine at some point. And they, I just heard have that it. some people are. I think some movies. I think Mortal Kombat's one of them. Uh, is actually fighting for theatrical release against okay. all of this because I think that HBO, one of the uh, companies, I'm not a. Uh, don't quote me here because I don't have it up here, but I know that I've read that is suing them HBO Max for this because they only had 30 minutes 
of knowledge yeah. of this happening. Prior uh, yeah, legendary is, is yeah. suing them. Yeah, legendary. So I'm just like, yeah, get get, get your money, but go ahead, go ahead. Right. What well, can you? So you you were talking about Dune for a second. Yes. You know how massive that is. We it's yep. same guy that made Blade Runner 2049, which also had a massive budget, didn't make its money back. Um, but you know, whatever. Dune probably has an even bigger budget, absolutely monstrosity of a movie. Yep. And legendary paid for 75% of that budget, whereas mm -hmm. Warner Brothers paid for 25%. And you're gonna give legendary oh, 30 minutes to to know, hey. You're, you're going on our streaming service because you don't right. have one. And it's like, what? what what's, yeah. what's the split in the money that you make? And how do you even know how much money is made from our movie? You know, like, because right. it's all subscriber stuff. So it, it has to be the most unbelievably terrible contract type of situation. Uh, no, but, absolutely. But some of these movies, I don't even know what the fuck they are. Like, Nope. Many Saints of Newark. What the hell is that? Is it like is that like a new like Boondock Saints movie or something? No the idea. Things. What the hell? Space Jam. I could literally care less about. Me either. Judas and the Black Messiah. It looks amazing. I really want to see it that. It does. Am I saying this right? Malignant. Malignant. What the fuck is that? Malignant. Malignant. Yeah. I don't sure. know what that means, but I know how to say it. Me neither. Yeah, that's one of us. Uh, those who wish me dead. Sorry to hear. Yeah. Fucking King Richard. Like Sounds Little like Richard. Theater. It's happening, right? And I can't see it's like faded. Reminiscence. Is that reminiscence? Yeah. Weird. It, it's yeah, it's so, it's, so the, it's, the ones that I'm I'm really uh, I mean it's the big ones. You 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 see them there. It's mm -hmm. it's Matrix 4, Matrix Godzilla wow. versus Kong. Uh you know, Dune, obviously, Suicide mm -hmm. Squad mm -hmm. is one of my most anticipated you know, movies in Same. next year. And that's going to be a massive movie. James Gunn has, has said that that's his biggest movie. And he made guardians two, which had the biggest special effect in the history of special effects. So, I mean, it's, it's, and what I think that you're, you alluded to it, but for those people that don't know, you're from New York city, you know, you're living in, you're, you're living in a place that is absolutely just, struck down by covid yeah whereas i'm living in country bumpkin texas where nobody gives a shit tough to find people wearing a mask and it's disgusting <laughs> um and things have been open since like april here so mm -hmm. i got to see tenant in a theater you didn't you haven't got to see it yet Fucker. and but the point i i am and yeah. but the point that i think i've seen a lot of people and it's funny because a lot of them are people from here from Texas and the South and places that are open. And they're like, Hey, why are you so mad? You can see it in a theater. If you want, this gives people the option. The right. point is you don't have that option. You have to watch it at home because you're in New York. They right. don't have open theaters. You want to see it in a theater and you would wait a year. Although it would suck. I would rather wait an extra year to see Dune. Yep. In a IMAX theater, than see it tomorrow on my home TV. That's me personally, but it's a thing where it, it's frustrating for you because you don't have the option. Right. No, it's it's absolutely frustrating, and it's and I'm reading this up here that I say a whole bunch of bullshit. That's not really entirely all of the things we went over already, but this is what frustrates me. We see it as a win-win for film lovers and exhibitors. And we're extremely grateful to our filmmaking partners for working with us on this innovative response to these circumstances. Really? Yeah. Win-win. Sure. For who? Right. Houseway. Who are we who are we winning? Because it's not it's not the audience. For majority of your films, it's not the audience. Like if you just took all the little shits nobody cared, you no, know, give a fuck about, nobody would care. They're like, okay, fine, whatever. I'll watch In the Heights at home, and it's fine. I don't need to go to the theaters to see that shit anyway. But it's like, you're not a appealing to anyone but yourselves. Yeah. That's really all this is. This hybrid exhibition model enables us to best support our films, creative partners, and movie going in general throughout 2021, said Toby Emmerich. Didn't Toby Emmerich, the man who literally just shit on the Joker... 
Correct. Okay, thought so. So, so automatically, fuck you. <laughs> what, what's What's interesting to me on this, and I could be completely wrong. I'm not an expert here, but in terms of like making your money back, HBO Max is the opposite of that. Like, yeah, pretty much. There, like, I don't have to watch Godzilla versus Kong. I really don't have to. So if I was, if I'm not, I mean, the first Godzilla is good. Skull Island is okay. King of the Monsters is garbage. Um, so following the trend, we're going down. Um, but King Kong, if Kong, oh, 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 I think that would, do we see, do we see differently on this? Okay, never mind. I'll wait. Um, but in terms of making your money back, and in terms of having a plan for your company in general, HBO Max is doing terrible. We all know that the numbers are bad, whatever they're saying. And so they have something like Snyder Cut Justice. that they're putting they're putting a lot of money into it, trying to get subscribers. And not only now is Snyder Cut kind of an afterthought when you can have the Suicide Squad, a big blockbuster movie that's meant for the theater playing, you know, or whatever it may be. Um, but a year from now, when 2022 starts, mm. people you're you're now setting a precedent to where people might not say, "Yeah, let's go back to the theater after you give me this option." And Warner Brothers, one of the biggest studios there is, there's ever been, might be forced to say every movie from now on is like this, and they're going to lose their ass. Because I have HBO Max because someone I know has AT&T and they get it free. Oh. And, I, and I sign in, I sign in through them. Uh, and <laughs> yeah, No, exactly. I mean, and, and they use my Disney plus and so do three other people. So, I mean, it's like, yeah, I know it's terrible. You want it? Um, but uh, yeah, but it's the thing. It's like, you're not going to make your money back. And then you're also laying the groundwork it's like spoiling a child if you give them everything you want they're going to grow up and be pieces of shit and if you give a yep. you know you're giving families of people your blockbuster films for 15 bucks a month and that's it that's less than the price of a ticket and yep. how many people can watch it for that amount of money per month right you're you're not going to make your money back so a so year from now out. there's no win yep. win you're not making and, money yeah, not because awake. also movies in the future because of this will have to have lower budgets to work financially. Mm. We're, we're going to lose blockbusters. Um, they're going to be the only thing playing in theaters and the studios won't be able to fund them. And so we're going to lose them and therefore lose theaters. That's how I kind of see this happening. And I don't want that because the theatrical experience is literally my favorite thing. Pretty much. It, it really is. Yeah. And so the idea of losing that, and I was talking to a guy yesterday that was like, this is the theater's fault. They should have come up with the plan a long time ago. And I'm like, that's besides the point. Yeah. The point is Dub Warner brothers is, you know, kicking them while they're down right now. You know, you can have a, a friend that never studies for a test anyway, but besides. as soon as, as soon as the teacher calls them out and says, you haven't passed a test all year. And you're like, damn, you don't got to do that. Like, making them cry. And that's right. kind of what's happening. And so I just, I feel bad for the studios that weren't involved in this. I feel bad for uh, movies in general. I, I mean, we're supposed to be getting, you know, Disney's supposed to be having that meeting uh, this week and, you know, they might be now leaning in a way to do something similar, which would suck. I will put boots to asses. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it, I really hope not, but it, you know, anything's possible because Warner Brothers is it's literally Warner Brothers and Disney are like the, the two monsters. Yeah. So uh, but what do you think specifically about about these that are going to what, what grinds your gears here the most? Oh, it's yeah, just, oh, it's just that but if I had to pick one, they're literally just it's, the film experience is being destroyed. That's just my whole yeah. thing. That's it. Um it all fits under that one little umbrella. The film industry is getting fucked. Yeah. And the GOAT himself had something to say about it because apparently uh, HBO clapped at him, unless I'm completely just thinking that wrong, but I think they clapped at him first, did they not? 
Uh, I mean, it's kind of, a, it's kind of, you know, it's like, hey, well, hey, he forced us to do Tenet, and we lost our ass, which they did, which, okay. and he did, but. So Christopher Nolan calls HBO Max the worst streaming service in response to Warner Brothers' 2021 film Slate Move. So let's yeah, see. He, he did not hold back whatsoever. I'll tell you that. It was, I was very surprised to read some, some of the things that he, he dropped. Okay. In a statement to the Hollywood reporter, Nolan said, some of our industry's biggest filmmakers and most important movie stars went to bed the night before thinking they were working for the greatest movie studio and woke up to find out they were working for the worst streaming service. <laughs> <That is rough. laughs> He's not lying. Nope. This is that more. Okay, let me go down here. So Warner Brothers had an incredible machine for getting uh, a filmmaker's work out everywhere, both in theaters and in the home. And they are dismantling it as we speak. They don't even understand what they're losing. Their decision makes no economic sense. And even the most casual Wall Street investor can see the difference between disruption and dysfunction. Oh my God, this is a lot. See, see that's kind of what I'm talking about. Is it, I don't know why... Like, and what I heard somebody say is like the CEO of HBO or Warner Brothers, like they've invested a lot into HBO Max and he'll lose his job if HBO Max fails. And so this is more of a stunt to keep his job because obviously HBO Max will somewhat succeed this year, you know, mm. this upcoming year because of this. But, you know, what happens after that? What happens when in 2022, the Batman comes out in March, which is a terrible release date. But it comes out in March, and it's not on HBO Max. It's pretty appropriate. That's my birthday month. Um, okay, okay, I like that. Um, but you know, when as soon as the that kind of movie, the freaking Batman, oh, it's not on HBO Max anymore. You got to go to a theater. People are gonna be like, oh, fine, then I'll stop paying. You know, this streaming service. It's if I don't get yeah. that anymore, it's done, and it's going to have such a dramatic drop off. And we already know that throughout this next year, once they're doing good, they're going to say, hey, let's fund this project for it. Let's fund this project for it. And then they're going to be As on their ass. Should. And, As and it fucking should. Warner Brothers is going to go bankrupt in the next few years. I kind of, I feel that way. And I don't want it. I don't want Disney to own everything, but they might. Um, My so, thing is you can't bitch about something that wasn't in your plans to begin with. Correct. HBO Max and all this other shit was not created to bring all these movies to fucking streaming. It was created to have what you know and love from HBO all in one roof while creating their own shit exclusively for HBO Max, like their shows, documentaries, whatever the fuck, it's movies, not but not to bring right, not to bring theatrical shit over here. So yeah. why are you bitching about what you will lose once that happens when that was never part of your agenda whatsoever? And it's like, Again, and that's why I saw some people like saying, oh, I don't necessarily agree with Christopher Nolan. Da, 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 da. What is he saying wrong? Like there's nothing he's saying wrong in my uh, in my eyes whatsoever. Nothing. He's spitting yeah. number straight facts. He's getting straight to the source. He's speaking to what filmmakers and people are literally feeling right now. Yeah. It's not like filmmakers just make a movie. It's like, okay, my life's done. I earned nothing from this. La, la, yeah. la, 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 la. No. Like it's, he is 110% right in everything that he said and like i said the the industry is being destroyed demolished fucking wait like i said sit down have a drink bite your nails do something when shit opens back up throw your movies right. into theaters people will see it and they'll and, go and i i do want to get you know devil devil's ad, advocate for two people for someone that's not on here you know you're talking to two people that are feeling on one side of this but I talked to Matthew Haynes on Twitter yesterday, and he's I'll someone. A brief, uh, brief for that conversation and, a little bit. And although I don't understand it whatsoever, he's someone that says I could watch every movie for the rest of time at home and be perfectly happy. I don't understand Never. that, and I know that you don't either. But there are people like that. But I think that that's the problem. Is I care about theaters. Yeah, and you know someone like that with that mindset who doesn't care, they could watch them at home. They aren't realizing, or they at least don't care that this could therefore destroy theaters for me. 
They, it yeah. could take that option away from me. It and can be so, the same for the mainstream because it's literally the mainstream option. That's what right. majority of people would love to do as well. And, experience. and again, Matthew, we love you, bro. This is no, uh, yeah, and that's the thing. Is, I, mean, <laughs> I, I had a great, yeah. a great conversation with him because it's nice when you can debate someone and it, you know, not right. get hostile whatsoever. So, it, uh, yeah. So, and but I, I will admit that it frustrates me to see someone like that that claims to be a fan of big movies but doesn't see that you take that theatrical experience away, Warner Brothers will have no reason to make a Dune sequel or a Godzilla versus Kong 2 or you know something like that. They won't have a reason to spend that much money because you don't need to film things in IMAX with IMAX cameras. You don't need to have, you know, these giant sets because you're watching on a small screen. The biggest TVs that we have right now that the mainstream people might have is what 75 and that's if yeah. you're rich. 80 I mean most uh, I mean, yeah, so it's like, m but most people are watching on what, 55 inch TVs, mm -hmm. I would probably say would be the, the median there. Yeah. And that you have to, you have to sit so close to the screen to see all the details and things like that, oh, where yeah. it's just, it's a, your, our, our quality of film will go down because things will be made for the television screen. And that doesn't mean that things like that can't be great. Something like Game of Thrones first few seasons can do that. And you know, we can barely do shit 4K, uh, right? <laughs> on streaming and, and or just in general. You know, and that's the thing is, like, I, HBO Max is over here saying, "Oh, well, hey, we're bringing 4K now," and it's like, with Wonder Woman, right? It's the first yeah, thing. but it's like, hey, you you're being forced to because of Wonder Woman. You were never going to give us 4K content, but you're the most expensive streaming service. No. That makes no sense whatsoever. Not to mention the fact that you don't even give us your full, you know slate of movies aquaman is no longer on hbo plus or max but i can watch everything disney's ever done on disney plus for much cheaper for half the price and it's in 4k hdr so that's wild to me and uh and you know so i'm frustrated but there are some other people that feel other ways and that's fine i just i it's something where you know don't vote against something that you don't care about because it, you don't care about it, because some other people could, and, and people. that's yeah, and that's where you know think of other people in the sense of that's what, like fight for something that you you don't purpose per, uh, personally care about, but understand that other people do, and I'll I'll be okay with that. Yeah, it's it's I will never understand it. Like all of us have respect for people that you know want to do that. Cool, that's you. I just personally would never understand it unless it's a movie that's tailor made for that, that you right. can watch at home and do whatever. Then I'm all for it. But I'm not about to sit here and watch fucking Fast Nine on my sure. TV and be like, oh my God, this spectacle is yeah, so. I got the full experience. <laughs> yeah, no, there's no. Right. No way. There's too much going on in that movie. That, like, that's an experience. Like, I'm and not going to. Yeah, no, I can't. And, and it's something like because what people were saying was, well, hey, Marvel's making Disney Plus shows, and that's made for TV, and obviously we have Mando things like that. Yes, right. it's that's made it. right. for that. They have lower budgets. They are they are going to be formatted in a way, and pick, they're going to literally be framed in a way to look the best on mm -hmm. TV. There won't be a lot of little minute details that you see because it'll be made for a small screen. Right. So something like uh the last episode of Mando with Ahsoka, I would not have noticed uh, what's uh, Makai, the owl that oh, it follows Ahsoka. Mari, 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 Mari. 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 Yeah. Um, I wouldn't have noticed it. Let us know in the comment section. <laughs> uh, uh, I wouldn't have noticed it if it, if it was on the TV and they're the first time I watched it, but I saw it on the screen right here in front of me. And it's the whole picture on a 27 inch screen. So it's, it's right here. Everything's right in front of me. Like right. I'm, I'm sitting in a theater. That's the same type of scenario is I have a screen that is most of my face right here. But what frustrates me is Mando is shot in the 21 by nine aspect ratio. All that screen real estate of the bars on top and bottom are wasted. You're right. filming this like it's on the big screen and it's not. That first episode when it expands out with the giant worm scene and that whole third act is that was it, amazing. It it why they don't do that for everything makes absolutely no sense. Right. And it's formatted for TV. It's formatted for a 16 by 9, 
you know, 1080p type of scenario, 1920 by 1080. Um, you can, you know, resolution go up and down all you want, but that's how it was framed. That's what IMAX almost is. And I, that's one thing that really frustrates me is something like Mando. You're made for TV. Film it like it, like you're made for TV. Right. Game of Thrones didn't have black bars. You're watching. You see the whole thing on that screen, and it that that helps make something feel epic on a smaller screen. But I have I have a 65 inch TV, and I got a deal on it, so don't think I'm rich. And <laughs> and uh, I have to move my couch up really close just to see detail on movies that I want to watch from home. I'm literally currently watching. Uh, the Hobbit and Lord of the Rings for the first time. I watched the first Hobbit a couple days ago. I'm sorry. And, and uh, yeah. Um, but watching it in 4K HDR, the, it's beautiful, but I have to sit really close because I don't want to miss anything because that was made to be on a giant screen. Yeah. And uh, and that's something that we're going to miss out on when we when you know you have to watch Wonder Woman 84 on your home television. And that really sucks. God forbid. I mean, that is honestly better than something like Dune. Um, Cause I mm. cannot imagine watching Dune on a small screen. I really can't, but uh, uh, I won't. And th- so that's the thing is I, I won't do it. I, I still haven't watched it alone. <laughs> not, me, neither. I, I, I didn't waste my time. It, it's a, you're trying, you're trying to kill my theatrical experience. Uh, I'm not going to do it, you know, and I'll, I'll watch soul when it comes out on Disney plus. Because that is a movie. It's a Pixar movie. Watch it, at home. It, you can watch it at home. It can work. Um, but Mulan was a giant blockbuster of a film, and they, you know, they threw it on a TV. And I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do it. Um, yeah. Black Widow, I won't do it for. I will literally, I would rather get spoiled than watch it for the first time at home. That and that's just, that's just it. I'm not going to let my first experience of the full film be on a small screen. Can't do it. Watch her fine ass on a little ass screen. Uh, negative. I will. I nope. Yep. Sorry, I cannot. But right with guys, I know we've we could talk about that for a lot of passions about this. Right uh, for the subject. Let us know what you guys think in the comment sections below. I know a lot of people are split with this uh, decision. I know a lot of people have their own opinions and their views. Uh, so start a healthy dialogue in the comment section. Don't kill each other. Um, but just let us know what you're thinking and hit that subscribe button while you're at it. There you go. Fill in with the latest going on here at Night Entertainment as well as Mr. Logan's Wish. So oh. I'd say we have going into a little bit of smaller things and we have a really big one, which I'm very excited to get into because it just keeps giving lovely little nuggets of just awesomeness. But we'll get into this small little chunk of change. We got our first little exclusive look at Godzilla and Kong. Now, this is coming off the heels of a very, 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 very disappointing. What the fuck is it called? CD XP. Uh, Comic Con experience. CCXP. Yeah, there you go. That thing. I clearly did not watch it. Um, and the way that everybody was going about it on the internet, I didn't want to. I was like, oh, okay, yep, I'm fine. I'm not missing anything. So we really didn't get shit but a title reveal. And uh, where'd it go? We had, oh, there it is. A little two second clip of motherfuckers just flowing in the water and screaming. And screaming, yep. That's it. Now, badass. Sure. All right. Badass, but I mean, uh, Damn it! Like, give if you're showing things like this, like give it to the rest of the. I hate, that's the biggest thing I hate about cons. I hate it so much when it's like, okay, yeah, yeah, people pay for it, yeah, cool, eh. Like, your con, give it to everybody else that's clearly clamming for this to yeah. be seen. Show it to the rest of us. Don't just give it to them. Yeah, they paid for it. Whatever, fuck them. They got it first. There you go. Money's worth. Now give it to us. Like it's <laughs> like, well, I hate that. Even Comic-Con, it, it, that was, that was free. It, it wasn't even, I mean, it was just oh, yeah, open. Before COVID. Uh, correct. But, but apparently I, I now have, they're starting to bring it back. 
<laughs> I, I have to, I am right there with you in the, I, I'm really, I'm tentatively excited for this, but Very. that, that was such an absolutely wasted, like you should not have even put it in that trailer that they had, whatever, where, you know, just cause it's two clips. Those could be from either movie, you know, like it, that nothing is special about them. Could have had a, a shot of them standing next to each other. You know, like oh, actually like, facing oh. that, that would have been something that it's like, holy shit, when do we get to see more of that? But this is God, literally so from King of Monsters when I showed that in yeah. the trailer. I was like, oh, scale. Exactly. So, you know, you look at this, uh, it, it, the release date says May. I don't know if they're moving things around or not because of what they're, what they've now done with HBO Max. But I, I mean, this is, it, it's a terrible first look. Um, and you know, I, I I don't know. I I feel bad for you know. I know Legendary made Godzilla vs Kong um, because they're that's one of the movies and that's one of the reasons why they are suing. Um, oh and shit! Like, Stars Garden sorry is starring in that. Did not know that. He? Yeah. Interesting. Oh, they're bringing Millie Bobby Brown back. Okay, interesting. I knew that and I knew Deny uh, Guerrero's in it. Okay. Uh, uh, I knew Chandler was coming back, Kyle Chandler, but all these new people I didn't like. I didn't know Alexander was starring in that. That's completely yeah, no. Jessica Henwick. So we got a little uh, Colleen action in there from Iron Fist. Good for her. Isa Gonzalez, her fine ass. She's in this. <laughs> Not complaining. Brian Tyree Henry. Cool. Rebecca Hall. Didn't know that. Good for her. And Damien Bichar, Bichar, that sounds crazy, but I don't know who that is, but good for you. Wow. So my only question is, how is Kong so damn big? Because in Skull Island, he was a child in Skull Island? Is that what happened? Okay. Because I'm like, Godzilla is like, Towering. Oh my! Over. Yeah, he's like four times the size of him, probably. So like, How is that gonna work? Yeah, he's <laughs> gonna step um, on. Him. All right, yeah. fight over. So, so making them if they're the same size, who who wins? Godzilla. That's what it should not be. a not a fucking chance in the real world. It should be God fucking Zilla. He's nope. a king for the goddamn reason. King of all monsters. All monsters. King Kong. Kong? Yeah, Godzilla. There, there's a reason why they've called it Kong for two movies when his name and everything else is King Kong. Because he has to become it. He's going to fucking take out, or he should. Even just the simple fact of evolution, my friend. We're not run by lizards. Evolution. We're run by primates. One has thumbs, the other doesn't. All right? He has thumbs. He has all these shit. He has. Full graspy hands too, so he can fuck people up. Remember, Godzilla knows kung fu. <laughs> <laughs> if he if he rides his tail, if he rides his tail and, and right. <laughs> he wins, that's it. I, I I swear to God, if he does that in the movie, it's the best movie ever. It I just is. want to see Godzilla just fly across this kick. <laughs> I just I I really I hope that we see King Kong at one point just go. And just start wailing on Godzilla with his little arms, like, "Oh, well, let me just grab oh, you." And it's like, nah. Yeah, oh that. God. Good luck. But that's the I. My honest prediction: if someone wins, it'll be Godzilla. I do think that they would do that. I think that it's a wrong decision, but I would also think that Superman shouldn't lose to Batman, and he does. Oh, um, no. And First well, no, all. but. Well, no, that's the thing is Bat- Batman outsmarts him. Who's smarter, Godzilla or a primate? Anyway, um, but I I think that King Kong should win, um, but he, he won't. won't. I don't I don't think he will. Here's what I here's what I at least think they sh- they would do or should do if that's the case. And, and more than likely, no one will. That's excuse me. Well, that's what I was kind of was gonna say. It was like I think they'll both have a turn. Kicking the shit out of exactly, the other. and then at the end they'll come together to fight. Like I'm, I'm 
throwing it out there saying that they're going to go against Mega Godzilla or Mech Godzilla. That's what I think what they're yeah. going to do. Yeah. Um, because you already went through tons of kaiju and monsters before. What else are you going to do that's big enough to like take on those two so they take can make a updated right version of like Mega Godzilla and it's like, oh, here we go, and just have them two just fucking go at it at this thing. That's yeah. what I think. Um, if Kong comes out a winner, I will be walking out because it's bullshit. But um, because in the in the original, in the old school, they had each person, each one, each person, Jesus, each one win for its designated market. So Godzilla oh. won in Tokyo in their release. Kong won in America. So it's like, I like that. Obviously, they're not going to do that here, but. Yeah. Godzilla needs to come out. Right, listen, he just needs some of that fucking Mothra atomic shit, and Kong's done like immediately. But they already used that, so it's probably not going to happen. But whatever. Well, and uh, I don't know. I I shouldn't bring this up, but I we both agree they'll fight. There will be two fights. One yeah. beats the other, and then flip it, and then maybe a, it, during a third fight. It gets interrupted because hey, they're together again. Send out Mecca, kill them right. both at the same time. And if that, if you're not realizing what movie that is already, that was a piece of dirty, squishy dog shit. <laughs> it, it was called Batman versus Superman: you know, that, that Dawn stuff. of Justice, <laughs> and Mecca Godzilla is Doomsday. Yeah. And they'll probably put his ass in the trailer because they're oh, not going to learn. The trailer. <laughs> and, and so, I mean, I just, uh, it, it's a thing. I, I fully, you and I see eye to eye on that. I think that that will happen. And I, but I do honestly think if one is a winner, if they get ballsy and say, hey, let's let him be a winner and be dumb and lead into, end it with Mecha Godzilla coming out and they look at each other and go, all right, get up. Like, we got to take this guy on. They could do that and have some balls. And if one wins, it will be Godzilla. I do think that. Um, but the sadly, I think the reason why is because of the Chinese market. They, they're they going to pull what Transformers was doing and say, who makes more money? Yeah. That's it. Because Godzilla is going to keep overseas regardless. Exactly. So I... I, and I don't blame them for that, especially with how stupid the decision ends up being with HBO Max. I hope Legendary makes as much money as they can off this. Um, but I would choose King Kong. I, I've always just I've loved King Kong. Always um, the the what, who made the other one? Peter Jackson. Peter Jackson did make that. Okay. Uh, I, I mean, it was the classic tale. They did a great job with it. And uh, and Kong Skull Island. I will admit, I was super excited for. Um, and it was a disappointment for me, but it's enjoyable. And, uh, seeing, seeing a massive, you know, Kong was awesome. And I can't imagine him as big as he's supposed to be, but I don't think it'll be that long until we see it. So I think he'll be a little smaller than yeah. Godzilla. I don't think he'll be as big because God, he'll have the arms huge. He'll have the wingspan. Yeah. Yeah, he definitely will. All this fucking shit, he'll be absolutely. If, if he starts doing that, because that's the thing is, is he going to be fast or is he going to be slow like Godzilla? I don't know. He's going to be big monkey fast. He's not going to be, be like faster than Godzilla. Yeah, I think he'll be he'll be faster than Godzilla unless Godzilla lose lost a little weight from here to the He's, other. That was a big boy. It was a big boy, but once he got <laughs> your ass, like that was <laughs> that was it. <laughs> Because that, like, that is the question too. Yeah. You, could, as soon as he uses his like fire breath, is that going to just light Kong on fire and just hear him start squealing? I don't know. That'd be animal cruelty. It should, but it won't. He'll right. probably just fly back and be like, Argh. he's technically the, they're titans. You know, they're they're kaiju. Yeah. You know, so it's like they're supposed to kind of have powers here, but right, Kong it doesn't have power. Because he hit, you know. Uh, Gadara and all of them with the fire breath and like straight on it just fucked him up it's only when he put that shit inside of him he was like yeah you're gonna die today that's yeah. when it all yeah. you know 
got fucked up and then he turned like subatomic nuclear and then just destroyed everything. Yeah. Um, Cause if he does that in this movie, like Kong's done regardless. I, but I could, I could almost see them trying to figure out a way to give Kong a power. And the only thing I could think of, it would be, but the only thing I could think of is some Donkey Kong kind of shit and like him start slapping and it doing like bursts <laughs> of air. Oh, and like, like, for, like like the Hulk, like a thunderclap. Just like, uh, like correct, yeah. Shit. And okay. so, That's but it would be the worst thing ever. They should just not do it. But yeah, it would be dumb. Um, um, I, I'm, I'm interested to see who wins clap. that. Clap at you know. Yeah, yeah, I know. It should be Godzilla for all marketing purposes and just. I, I do think marketing so, purposes. Yeah, but um, we shall we we shall see. I'm excited regardless. It's going to be a big ass spectacle that I will not be watching on my couch. So now jump into another thing, which is we can fly by this real quick because it's not really yeah. a huge thing here. Not a huge thing. For 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 me, kind of it is for you, not so much. Correct. So Metal Gear has found its solid snake. And it's somebody that you know a lot of people love. I like him, but I'll tell you now, I'm not sold on this whatsoever. Really? And okay. Oscar Isaac is solid snake. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not feeling this. Um, okay. And it's, I love the director choice for it. Yeah. Speaking of Kong Skull Island, your favorite movie. Um, he is directing it. Jordan Vock Roberts. If I'm saying that right. Voxed, however the hell you say it. Mm-hmm. Sorry if you're watching, <laughs> but, um, they announced that Oscar Isaac will be playing the, you know, the titular role in uh, the upcoming Metal Gear. Now, there's been a lot of fan castings, you know, that have been miles better that I can see. Like, there's been Christian Bale, there's been Chris Evans, and all done by, as you see here, Boss Logic. And I guess he did one. Rosario more. Dawson as Ahsoka. Yeah, I mean, and it's like, like that's that's what he did. Like that's cool, but what what I hate about that picture is that really doesn't even look like Oscar Isaac. But it, it, I mean, it slightly. But it's like he made one with Christian Bale. He made one with Chris Evans, and those shits were like, oh, yeah. sweet Jesus! Like, and I can definitely see that. And I can definitely see Christian Bale doing that too. I think he would have been amazing as that where he's got the build he's got the length he's got the chops he's got the act the action chop all that shit um i'm not completely opposed to oscar i'm not saying ruling him out i hate it la 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 it's just not for me someone who is a huge fan of the games and who has played all of them religiously it's you, you go into the typical shit where it's like, you know what to look for, what to expect in certain aspects yeah. to go for. And yeah. Oscar just doesn't check a lot of those boxes, but I'm not saying he can't do it. I would just have to see it to believe it. For me so, to just jump on board. What I'll say on this, I, I do agree that I, just the mere fact, I think Oscar Isaac is a little short. Yes, and he a is. Little, a little stubby almost for this, you know, Solid Snake is a tall, um, do not look at his face, but like a, I would think of a Robert Pattinson type of build. Tall, lanky, athletic, um, which is the kind of Batman we're about to get. Um, but what I will say, and what excites me for this, is if you read that tweet, it says, for, to everyone asking how I feel about Oscar Isaac, saying he wants to be Solid Snake, uh, the full process required to cast an iconic uh, an icon hasn't even started, but ask Boss Logic where the idea for his brilliant mock-up came from. What he's saying, and the ball is in Oscar's court. What he's saying is, I'm directing this. I love that idea. And it's also coming off the fact that Oscar Isaac literally got asked a question, what's a you know a video game or a you know, what was it? I can't remember what the exact quote was, but what what is a movie that you would like to be in? What would like to see made? And he said, Metal Gear. He said, I want that. So he, as an actor, is a giant fan of these games, uh, of the character. 
And so that is the kind of thing that gets excited, exciting for me because Rosario Dawson yeah. oh. is very similar to, to that in the sense of she randomly out of nowhere, somebody said like, Hey, Ahsoka. And she was like, Oh my God, are you kidding me? I would die if I was Ahsoka. And that came at a time that it was like, she shouldn't have even known who Ahsoka was. Right. And the fact that she did, she's a, she's a fan and nobody even knew it. And so, Although the look isn't perfect, the idea of having an actor come in and say, I know this character, I'm a fan, I know the games, it you can take you can take the look away and say the interpretation is in good hands. The director is a giant fan, that main actor that's cast is a giant fan, and that excites me. Um, because it's it the biggest problem you can, you know cast a perfect lookalike in anything but if it's if the director's bad the script's bad or the acting is bad movie's going to be terrible um any of those can suck so th the fact that we have two big check boxes uh in terms of the directing choice and in terms of how big of a fan oscar is mm -hmm. I, I think that we're we, we have some things to be excited about for this project yeah, pop, yeah, possibly you, you do have a good point. I don't necessarily think because you're a fan of something, you're going to rock it out. But so far, the track record has been pretty good when it comes to that. Um, or to Oscar, that Oscar Isaac is a good actor. Oh, yeah, yeah. by all oh. means. Yeah. This isn't any knock on his acting. Yeah, I, so that's why if it was a bad actor, it was like, hey, I want to play. It's like a Tyrese wanting to be Jon Stewart. Fuck yeah. out of here. When you I saw wish. In, in like, Boston. You tried, <laughs> your brother. You really did, but it's just like we, we cannot speak like so, that again. It, do right like that. now, you you kind of see my mindset here. It's like Oscar Isaac is a top tier actor that loves the franchise and says, "Hey, you give me that, I'm going to do the best I can." You already know it because he wants to make a good movie because he cares about the IP. So that's yeah. what excites me. Um, especially not being like, I've watched a few get played, I think of metal gear. Mm -hmm. Um, but I don't know the story that well. And so the idea of now I have the opportunity to go in pretty much blind from two people that are the main parts of the story being massive fans and saying, Hey, we're going to make this into a movie and we're going to, we're going to go hard at it. That excites me because, uh, I would like to think they're going to give a pretty good interpretation. Yeah. It's, it's, they have a lot to work with a lot to work with and it's an amazing just arc of stories and you know they jump around a lot in their continuity they, they kind of play with it but they just do it to serve a purpose of a story um but yeah. it's still some of the it's it's one of the best gaming franchises like ever like it's amazing um so they have a lot to work with and this can be a great segue to a huge franchise if done right so we'll see. I'm not I'm not ruling anything out. I'm not hating it. I'm not mad. It's just not for me immediately. I just have to see it. That's all. Correct. Um, I don't blame you. We'll see where we'll go from there. So before we get into uh, the main. The, the main, main event. Main, right. The main event. <laughs> Again, thank you guys. Make sure you're tuning in every week to Film Cave to see us Sir. right here. Just talking bullshit and nerding out, checking the job, whatever you want to call it. We're here to do it, and it's for your entertainment. We can't wait till you guys can jump in here with us. It's going to be amazing. And when you can send us questions, we'll tell you exactly how to do that. So be on the lookout. Yes, sir. Right. Brother man, this story is a big one. It's a massive. This is crazy. I can't believe this is real life. And even more dropped after the fact. I know. <laughs> so I'm just going to, in Collider, broke the news. Mr. Jeff Snyder over there. Yes. Doc motherfucking Ock is back. Yes, he is. Alfred Molina is back in reprising his role as Dr. Otto Octavius, and which is now... Listen, this is one of my most anticipated now. It's Spider-Man 3. This shit just keeps getting better and better and better. And it just keeps going. So it's 
we have the report here. So now it's official because they've been playing around with it for a while. It's been a rumor. It's been, oh, he might, this in talks, yeah. It's officially confirmed now. Yeah. So before we get into that, what do you think about that? It, it's honestly, it, it's pretty, it's pretty insane to me. I, uh, you know, we've heard, we obviously had Jamie Foxx as Electro coming back and that threw up, you know, a bunch of like, what the hell is happening types of scenarios. And, uh, but having Alfred Molina come back is it, it's more exciting to me because I thought that Electro and amazing Spider-Man two in general was hot garbage. Um, but then bringing in arguably, and I would think pretty much most people agree with this, but the best Spider-Man villain we've had on screen uh, in terms of Alfred Molina as Doc Ock, um, it, it definitely gets me excited. I'm I'm more interested to hear the capacity at mm. which he's coming back, but that also feeds into the other people that we're about to talk about, uh, which you see on screen here. Yes. So he's not alone. So as we as we stated. Melina is back. Jamie Foxx is back as Electro. Andrew Garfield will be back. These are all, it's not saying they may. The ones that say he will be back. Yeah, these are will. Sanity. It's, it's done. If Sony and Marvel can close the deal with Tobey Maguire. He'll be back too. So far, he's the only one. Yeah. That's really, so far, Kirsten Dunst will be back, unfortunately. Emma Stone to reprise her role as Gwen Stacy. How is that happening? I don't know. So it's, this is amazing. All being led by Tom Holland. And this, this is going to certify him even more because if he can command and lead a movie this big with all these people in it, with all this fanfare, with all this story, because isn't Dr. Strange is in this too, no? Or am I born? Nope. Yeah, okay. He's he's gotta be in it, I think. Yeah, so it's they're clearly Spider-Verse is happening. That is what it is. Spider-Verse is here. And it's like what you said, it makes me so incredibly happy because this movie is bringing back all the aspects I loved from every single Spider-Man movie. Majority. They brought back Andrew Garfield, who is my second favorite Spider-Man. Um, they're bringing back Electro, who I don't care what nobody says. I fucking loved Electro. I hated Max. I loved Electro. Electro was so badass and just fun to me in that movie, and he was so godlike OP. There was so much potential they could have done with that. They didn't fully capitalize on because they made him yeah. truly godlike. Right. They could have done so much, but I thought visually he was cool. That everything I loved it, and then. Like we have now Doc Ock, who was Crazy. the best thing in the only good thing about Spider-Man 2. And yes, I'm going to trigger everybody by saying that Spider-Man 2 is boring as hell. Yes, it is. What? The original Spider-Man okay. trilogy does not hold up. It's boring as hell. Okay. Sorry. And Toby sucks oh. ass. I'm sorry. <laughs> so... Moving on to that, now that everybody just turned off the video. I know, um, yeah, let's try to rain, rain them back. <laughs> right. Um, they, Alfred Molina was amazingly badass as right. Doc Ock and was the glue to that film. Um, and it's very interesting. I'm curious how all these characters are coming back um, because, like we said, it's dealing with Spider-Verse, but a lot of these characters are dead. Right. So, Either they're going to pull them for before their death or they're just going to go grab alternate versions of them elsewhere. So, so I definitely so think it's alternate versions. Yeah. I think that's what we're um, – I, I was going to ask you about this, but like there's a possibility here that they could pull – You know, I didn't watch it, but like a Crisis on Infinite Earths thing mm. and like Tobey Maguire's Peter Parker – the one that they go grab won't be the one that we know. And he could be a piece of shit. As he long could, as it's not emo Spider-Man. <laughs> he could he could literally be symbiote black suit Spider-Man and be walking around punching women. Oh, that's you fine. Know? 
Oh, well, okay. Yeah, well, so, yeah. <laughs> but, you caught but, me at the wrong moment. The thing is, like, what they did with Kevin Conroy, making him, yeah, and that which I didn't even watch it, but that kind of that makes me upset. It's like you took the, the you took Batman, literally, and you made him the bad one, and it's like you son of a bitch. Like, but let I wasn't him be close to it. I but but, then, but it's a thing where it's like. They, my point is, they have an opportunity to do things like that here, right. where we already like Jamie Foxx already spilled the fact that he's not blue, right? Which that already tells me this is an alternate version because I like the blue. Uh, um, and well, no, um, but out like, and it's also the point that they're dead, you know. So, Alfred Molina, this is going to be a different Doc Ock, um, mm-hmm. and but I was going to ask you. If you had, I shouldn't, I shouldn't spring you on this, but if you had to like th- guess, what do you think the actual plot of this movie might be in terms, of, like, in what capacity are they coming back? I don't know. Like, it's so confusing. Like, there's so many obstacles and just ways that can go that none makes sense at the moment because it's so like, why would you need? Yeah. All these Spider Men, unless like, oh, a hole got torn into a dimension. Now all the villains are out, and who's gonna stop them? And all the Avengers are off somewhere. To, I don't know. Like it would have to be some major event to bring that many Spider Men together, or maybe he needs to go back to find out. Hey, how do I? How did you stop this person? How did you stop that person? Yeah. What does it take to like fully unlock my potential of this? What did you do? How did you do it? And or something like that. And along the way, there each <clears throat> multiverse that he goes to, he goes to see Adam Spider-Man. Oh, uh, and uh, Adam, Andrew Spider-Man. But while he's in there, he's in the middle of some shit with Electro. And that's what right. happened. So each one he goes to, they're you know, dealing with their designated villain or whatnot, right. or timing. Um, or they're just going to bring them all together uh, into the Spider-Verse style. Like, are someone fucked up a portal or playing around with something? We need Strange and everyone to help out. Everyone's loose. What do we do? But I'm like, if you're going to do all this, where's Miles? Just bring Miles in. Just well, bring him in. I think that that's the, that's the long game. That You, you don't want to bring Miles in until Tom Holland could be wearing down. I, I would think if you if you could actually get to the point where you have Tom Holland being the you know mentor, the you know the grown Spider-Man PS4 type of That's Peter true. Parker, uh, that would it would just be incredible. But in terms of this movie, what what I'm worried about is Tom Holland. Um, I, really? I'm worried. I'm worried that the Sony is not caring about the MCU Spider-Man in this movie as a, as a story. I think they're going, Hey, into the spider verse hey. went ham. Odds are high. Um, and so, yeah. And so it's like, I'm worried about that. And so I'm trying to figure out a way for a Marvel studios to sign off on this and say, yeah, we're, we'll bring this in. Uh, Cause the only reason this is even happening is because of, WandaVision and Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness being, you know, it's right, it's sandwiched in between. So we have some multiverse stuff that we can play with. Um, So what I'm wondering is, you know, Peter Parker in the MCU is supposed to be going through some very personal stuff right now with his identity just being let let out. Where's that story? Do we get that story or are we saying screw that story? And so I'm hoping what I don't want is sadly the Avengers type of scenario here where you bring them all together and they have to fight something big, you know, bigger than one could fight. Um, I don't think that that makes sense for the story because it's also the fact of you got Dr. Strange right back here and he can fuck anybody in Spider-Man's rogue gallery up in a second. Mm. I mean, that's just, that's just the way it is. Um, so, uh, what I'm thinking, or I, I, honestly, what I'm hoping might be the case is similar to what you just kind of said. I'm hoping somehow with the multiverse being messed up, whether it's by Wanda or whether it's, you know, just something is happening. 
MCU Peter gets shot through dimensions and he runs into some other Spider-Man. What I think would possibly be kind of cool is you run, he runs into Andrew Garfield, Spider-Man. It's not the one that we know. It's a different version, whatever. And Andrew is fighting Alfred Molina as Doc Ock. And you mix them. Toby McGuire is fighting Jamie Foxx as Electro. We've never seen that. You know, we never got to. And so you, you are showing the audience. These aren't the ones that, you know, they're different interpretations. They look different. They're acting a little different, especially the villains uh, with that possibility. Cause they're, they're going to bring back their classic suits, um, especially Toby. But um, you know, so I think that it's going to be a scenario where it's, he's getting shot through and he's meeting other ones and realizing, cause it, also with what they did with far from home, he's like, Oh, the multiverse is real. And it's like, it is real, but the guy that's telling you is not actually from anything multiverse. Like, you know, that's, that's Mysterio. And so him going through and saying, Holy, Holy crap, this actually is a thing. And experiencing the fact that there are different Peter Parkers throughout, you know, the multiverse. Um, but then also for us as the audience, we can see that, you know, Octavius as a person can be the same person. You know, although Peter Parker's can look different depending on, you know, multiverse stuff, they can also look the same. And so, you know, Tom Holland could run into another Tom Holland um, could be interesting, you know. Uh, interesting. Actually. So, you know, you're not going to see that in a report because there's no casting difference there. Um, <laughs> so, so there's things that I mean, Toby Maguire could be with Emma Stone. And, you know, it, which I would hate that because I want the nostalgia. But uh, but also. Got to remember Andrew Garfield and Emma Stone, they were dating, but right. not anymore. Could be no, an issue there. They're professionals, I can handle I, it. I would guess so, but I mean, for all we know, they hate each other. I don't know, but um, I I'm worried about the story here. Uh, in terms of, There's I was, a lot. It, it's a t- it's a ton, and I liked where we left off with Far From Home because it was something we I was like, oh wow. I'm expecting Craven, you know, hunting Peter Parker. Excuse me. And this being, you know, it's it's a small, I'm on the run, possibly mixed with like a heist film type of scenario. And instead, we're getting this. And creativity is a thing, you know, do do whatever is best for the story. Mm-hmm. Um, so what I was expecting doesn't matter. But it's a thing where it's like, man, you know, where like how much of Zendaya is in this, you know, like I know they're filming right now. Is she about to be, you know, is she going to be at the beginning and the end and that's it? Cause he's going and doing a bunch that's, of other crazy shit. I think she'll be along with it because if you're running it, I think she'll be along for the ride. I think they'll all get sucked up for that because if you mean other you know, MJs and Stacy's and all that, you kind of have to have that interaction. Cause I believe that, they're going to continue the story of the identity. And I think that's going to play a huge factor as to why, you know, the okay. multi is playing a part. Um, maybe it's getting to a point where like, it's, it's getting too much for him. It's going ever bearing. Now his life is in jeopardy. Where is he safe? Where is he this? I don't know. And maybe it's through that kind of, loophole through the multiverse that kind of uh, maybe dr strange sends him on this journey yeah it, it, he you could know, be sending him on his fucking indian navajo you're yeah, a man like, find yourself coming to dr strange for some advice go walking into the sanctum and going oh my god everybody knows who i am and he's like hey you'll be fine you can figure this out and he's like no i have no idea and he's like others have dealt with this and he's like what do you mean see ya boom like go find out Actually, you know, I mean, you, you, it could be something like that. Now, will haters go, Oh, no, uh, Peter Parker needs another mentor? It's like, I'm already gonna say it. Fuck you, shut up. I know. So, it's, it's a, it, it's just, I, 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 you expect it, but um, the, the, the thing about it is the possibilities are endless. That yeah. just scares me when it's in Sony's hands because I've seen uh, what that could be. That's uh, always scary. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, we all saw Amazing Spider-Man two. It literally, the like Andrew Garfield Spider-Man in that movie might be my favorite Spider-Man. Amazing, like amazing. I, I mean, he's 
he's incredible. I don't like him as Peter Parker as much, but because uh, he's beautiful. He's in a skateboarder. What? But um, <laughs> but yeah. that that Spider Man like him with the absolutely horrendous Paul Giamatti as Rhino at the beginning of that movie. And, yes. but, but the quips that we got from Andrew Garfield, you know, what? riding on the front of that truck and doing all that kind of stuff. I, it was incredible. And the look of that suit, I still think it's probably the best suit we've ever had um, with the it's big a, eyes. It's a beautiful fucking suit. And so there's things from that movie that are literally the best. And yeah. Sony destroyed it. Um, and, you know, and that, that's scary. Even though it's Sony, it's Sony, I, I still was is guiding because this is a story that because mcu is smart they know like listen this is their third time cracking at this fucking ensemble major world shit throwing so many people in this they're not good at it we yeah. can't let them like we have to step I in agree. Cause i think this is their last contractually like together well, film well, wasn't it so but that was the thing was you gotta remember they had that deal and tom fell out of the MCU for uh, what was that a month or two? Yeah. And he fought and, back for it and they had to come to an agreement again. And I honestly, it, what, what I'm nervous about is Sony might've had Marvel studios by the balls and said, we will take him and put him in the venom verse without question. Will hmm. you make venom and Morbius, uh, you know, MCU and will you let us do what we want to do and make a live action spider verse? If you don't, we're out. And because you know, using you, because uh, like, isn't he in Morbius? But there's a picture of Toby in the background. And right. And from what I, I want to say, somebody said that that was just a placeholder, and it was going to be CGI'd over later. But it's also what? Um, it's weird. And so, so that's the question: is it? It? It's just it's scary to think the possibilities of the behind the scenes, because yeah. for all I know. Kevin Feige's going, oh my God, man, like hopefully this doesn't destroy Spider-Man for us. Uh, because from what I've heard now with that new, the, the new deal, Tom is locked in with the MCU for an extended period of time because they came to that new deal. Uh, if I want to remember correctly. And, but that could mean, you know, we're going to, we're going to hear that Tom Hardy's in this. We're going to hear that, uh, you know, uh, there, Jared Leto could be in it, which weird, but it, it could happen. And uh, I kind of hope I listen. I'm not mad if Tom Hardy's in it. Let him. That's great, because also they'll probably find a way to work in a Spider-Man and Venom's only birth by Spider-Man. And so everyone can start bitching and they'll probably make that a good thing and work it and all that good stuff. So let him in there so people can stop crying. That would sure. be great. I really liked Tom Hardy and Venom. I'm one of the few that actually really liked Venom. I thought it was fun as shit. Flawed, but fun. Um, so there's there's so much there's so much to unpack. There's so much to guess. There's so much to think. And it's it's a huge story. It's a huge fucking story. Right. Whatever they're doing. Yeah, and it's I'm telling you, them and Flash, man, they're they're going bold. Yeah. And it's you know, watch, I love it, but and can you imagine they're doing all this and Toby just says, I'm no. good. <laughs> no, they will literally, what, what's going to happen is they will have to pay Toby Maguire the biggest paycheck he's ever had in his career. And that and is I heard it's an asshole. So it's not and, really, no, that's exactly right. Because right. Um, yeah. I know you're the biggest fan ever, but I, oh, I was actually pretty upset with Robert Downey Jr when it came to Spider-Man homecoming because he made, I want to say he made like $30 million mm. and he's in the movie for like under 20 minutes or something. And he demanded that, or he wasn't going to be in it. Literally. He was like that much money or I'm out. And they, you know, Sony's like, Oh shit. Okay. And you know, Robert Downey Jr. Was kind of known for that after, after he got big, and then he tried to phase out and he went and made that judge movie and it bombed and he came back and was like, yeah, let's do another contract. And, you know, so Toby's going to be that times 10. And guess what? Sony will pay every oh, yeah. single dollar he demands. Because it's the same. It's the same thing. It's the same treatment of Robert. 
Because the reason why he's asking that, come on. Spider-Man's Spider-Man, we get it. Robert's what brought people in that fucking movie. He he was the he is it was Marvel. The connection. It was it was the connection right. to the MCU. Right. So it's like he is Marvel. So that's that's your moneymaker. This would be the same for Toby. If you get Toby back, people are gonna be like, oh my god, and like everybody's coming to see that it's shit. Everyone our age, it's their childhood going, holy shit. They just brought him back live action, like it's a real deal. So I I agree. But also from what people were saying, he was like, I'll be in it, but I don't want to be in a suit. And they're like, the whole point is that you're in a suit. You know, right. you're Spider-Man still in another universe. And he's like, eh, die, I'm not about it. You know, and it's like, I could definitely see him being that because he's like, hey, look, I'm fat as shit now. You know, <laughs> no, but I don't know. I'm sure he has a gut because he had abs in Spider-Man 1 and I highly doubt he's kept them. <laughs> yeah, you know, I wouldn't. I'm not getting that money, you know, to stay fit. The last uh, time we seen him, I think, was what Great Gatsby, and he was still skinny, looking crazy. I mean, he look, yeah, he looks like Tobey Maguire, but when you put spandex on, I mean, I wouldn't look very good in spandex right now. I don't know about you, but I would not. Yeah, no. I mean, and it's it. It might be a thing where they literally do body doubles. They could do CGI. They could do if he's if he has the mask on, it's not him. He takes the mask off. It's a it's a mid shot, and you know it's it could be a, it could be an Iron Man situation where our Iron Man was in the movie more in Homecoming, but Robert Downey Jr. didn't have to be there. He's it's a suit, you know. Right. So it, they that? could do that. You got to that, but that's a whole conversation to yeah. another. So I, I'm I am nervous about this movie because it's a, it's a thing that I mean I'd be nervous if it was any Marvel movie um, or any DC movie. I mean it's it's just when you start seeing this many pieces, what what would make me feel better is if every single person here it said cameo, 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 and you're like oh okay they're not running around together the whole film. They're not starring in it. It's still a Tom Holland MCU Spider-Man movie. And they're just in it. He's multiverse waving at them, having a few minutes with them and dipping. Yeah, um, I think it would be restrictions. And so and and that's a, that would be okay to me. And it's also a thing where, you know, if you're if as a viewer, if you're still interested, if you're not sure if it's going to be, oh, they're actually going and plucking, you know, Alfred Molina's. Doc Ock or Jamie Foxx's Electro. You got to remember that we've already had one character make this jump with J.K. Simmons as J. J. Jonah Jameson. Right. And it's the same person in terms of what they look like that was from Tobey Maguire's universe. They had, That person's parents looked the same. And so, but it's definitely a different J. Jonah Jameson than Toby's. You know, yeah. it's a, it's a, it's a, it's from a different universe. It's just that they just look the same. Um, cause Logan in a different universe could be my face or I could literally look like John. So, I mean, it's like, it's a thing. Um, so yeah, no, that's, that's, that's and it's so sure I, it's a risk. It, so but, I do, I do think that there'll be different interpretations. I just hope that they're not massive parts of the movie. Um, because that, that think, if you are gonna get, I think only one would be massive. If you had to pick, only one of them would be a massive. Correct. Movie. Oh, I could see that. And I would prefer Andrew. I feel like that banter would be a lot better and a lot uh, more fun and all that. I, yeah, I think Andrew is literally in the position already to be the mentor Spider-Man, and instead of having Miles, he's yeah. got a, another Peter. And he's like, and he's showing him the ropes and like, Hey man, you know, did your uncle Ben die? You know, like he could be asking that. Did your uncle Ben die? Cause you're acting, you're acting like it or, you know, something I mean, that could be a great way to finally talk about because we need to Yeah, MCU's uncle Ben. Sure. Right. To talk about uncle uh, Ben. Cause that'll be a connection between all three of them. So that will also shut people up. So yeah, yeah. Pl please do it. So we can end this. Please do I, it. I could also see Tobey Maguire being the scenario of like what they did, not in terms of the 
the bad guy, but like Kevin Conroy, very small role, never saw him in the suit, like in the cow. Um, right. But also uh, Smallville actor. Hey, oh, yeah. we need your help. I don't do that anymore. Are you kidding me? Yeah, sorry, I'm out. I made a different decision. Okay, thank, be, thanks for yeah. your time. And Toby Maguire could be that guy. That's like, hey, MJ and I, you know, after the Sandman showed up and he literally become a monster. I'm not sure do that. So, so no. it's like, hey, I gave up. There's there, or Toby could be the one that's like, I got another Spider Man taking my place. And it, and he's got a Miles because he's the oldest, so it makes sense for him to possibly have a Miles that he mentored ten years ago, and Miles is a badass. Right. There's so oh, many options. Um, but then it's because then it's like, who the hell is Miles? Like, who's the cast is Miles in that universe? Right. And you know, God forbid, it's not the same one. If he's great and if he's bad, then they better not cast the same one. It becomes a whole thing because, you know, for the MCU one, it's like, God, what are they going to do? But yeah. oh, it's, plenty of opportunities. I uh, yeah, it definitely would. I I think it's in the right hands. What Marvel and Feige overseeing, it's. I hope. Always, you know, an opportunity to just be phenomenal. So I'm, I'm not gonna doubt it. I'm not gonna get nervous. And Feige, I trust, even when he's dealing with Sony. Um, yeah. it has me greatly intrigued, and I'm I, very, I, very, very excited. I yeah. am paying attention to everything about this movie now. I mean, oh, that's yeah. that is without a doubt. Wholeheartedly, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so I'm, yeah, I can't wait. Yeah. Bring on, what was it 2021 that comes out or 22? Uh, December 2021, I want to say, because they're filming it. Yeah, because so. he's posting it all December 17th. every time. Oh, 2020. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Yep. Oh, shit. Yeah, it's not too far off. I'm, I'm, I'm here for it. Yeah, I'm here for a, it. A year and nine days. Yes. Yeah, well, yeah. Technical. <laughs> all right so man that's uh that's episode one in the can Ooh. man it's whoo it feels damn it feels good to be back i know it um, really does it's guys thank you for tuning in and sticking with us if you stuck through the whole ride um it's been an amazing first turnout and again we're starting this back up so not everything's going to be perfect first few out. Right. We are hitting the ground running. We are crawling before we, well, not running. We're crawling before we start to run, I should say. Yeah. Um, working out kinks. We're trying to figure out how to improve. Anything you guys want to you know, give to us, examples, whatever. We're here for all of it. But this is a growing show. So I ask that you guys be patient, that you stick with us. Keep joining the madness because it will continue. And we're going to keep giving you guys that goodness, you know, throughout this whole time, man. You know, it's, I'm excited. I, I'm so, I'm so excited for this. I think, I think that this could be something, you know, we have a, we have a blast talking about this kind of stuff. And, uh, and if we get the following that we're hoping that we get, if, if you guys, the viewers enjoy this, uh, we're gonna we're planning on doing this for a very extended amount of time. Yeah. So with that with that being said, let us know in the comments if there's things that you didn't like or things that you think we could improve on. Let us know because this is literally episode one of the reboot that is the film cave. Um, and if you actually made it to this point, you are a G. <laughs> uh, if you're in the comments, hashtag TFC is back. Let us know that you made it to this point. Uh, on social media, Twitter, Instagram, all that kind of stuff. Uh, let us know that you watched this. Let us know you enjoyed it uh, because we've we've had a blast with this and uh, we actually had a pretty damn big story in the middle of COVID time uh, to talk about and uh, a couple of them really. So that's rare, right? You know, and, and this is a thing that, you know, just simply the fact of this is a weekly show, Mando. Every week we're going to talk about the previous Mando episode. WandaVision's coming up. Same thing. Falcon and Winter Soldier, Loki. We'll have all this. It's a weekly show. And those are those are weekly shows. We will have recaps. We will have our reviews ready to go for you guys. And we could talk about them. 
be in the conversation. That'll be in the future too. And uh, this show can grow to be what all of us want and more, uh, I think, pretty easily. So stick around. Yeah, it's it's I I definitely, you know, quarterback off all of that. This this cannot be without you guys. I can't uh-huh. stress that enough. We can't stress that enough. Um, in order for this to grow and to give you the quality that you deserve, we need your help. So it starts with subscribing. Now starts with hit that notification bell. It it continues with sharing. I ask yeah. you guys to share this. So Anybody you know is a nerd head. Anybody you know likes to keep it real. Anybody that knows, you know, who likes to debate and get into all of this gaming, sports, movies, music, whatever. We discuss it all. I'm yeah. telling you, this is going to be a, uh, a show that's unique um, and different than any other. And we want you guys to have it and hear it here first. So please be a crime fighter. We have to figure out, you know, come into the cave. <laughs> <laughs> right, we have to figure out what thing for Logan as well. But yes, come into the cave yeah, and um, right. hang out with us for a little bit, and it's it's just gonna be amazing, guys. Again, this 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 doesn't happen without you. Um, this sure. is a partnership uh, for sure. Um, so I'm done talking your ear off. Uh, I'm sure you guys are like, oh my god, shut up, you get it. Yeah, yeah. no. But in times with these, especially YouTube, no way it worked. Like you, you have to be on it, you know. Um, and good quality, good content is getting lost out there. Not just with us, just in general. Um, so we're trying to bring it back, and uh, we're trying to bring the community with us. And those of you that stuck around know right. what that means. Know the events we've done, and it's only going to keep going. Um, so yeah, man, Mr. Swift, where can they? Where can they find you, brother, other than what's going on up top? you have anything you're working on, anything you want to plug? What's going on in your life? I mean, my YouTube channel, Logan Swish. I do a lot of stuff that's similar to what John does, reactions, reviews, currently doing Mando stuff. Started a Patreon, trying to get that going because Mando was such a rough situation when it comes to the, the reactions on that. So yeah. Patreon, all that stuff you can find on my YouTube channel. Um, where I do literally full unedited reactions to Mando and WandaVision. All those things will be on that as well. But um, yeah, I'm just, I'm excited for this. I, I think that the film cave is something uh, it, we've been wanting to do something like this for a long time. We've literally, we've been saying it. We wanted to do a first take. We wanted to do, you know, it, we there's other movie talk type of shows. There's guys that do it on their own. There's guys that do it with groups. John and I, are we have the same interest, but we have many different viewpoints on things. And that it, it's not that fun or interesting of a show if everyone agrees with everyone. Right. Um, and and it's also not a fun show for a viewer if if who you agree with isn't on the screen. You know, if you disagree, you just turn it off. So having people that could have different viewpoints is fun. But we're, we're going to try to make it to where, you know, we talk about things we both agree with, talk about things we both don't. And all along the way, it's things that actually interest us and hopefully you guys, because you're following us already. So with that being said, Logan underscore swish on Twitter. We, you know, John and I are on there all day long. That's his over there as well. We, uh, we're, we're going to be doing, I mean, I, I really think that community wise, it's going to extend to all those things. We're going to have questions being sent in, we can't do live yet. Twitter, Instagram, things like that are a place that people can send in questions and we can literally bring them right up on screen. Um, so that's something that we can incorporate in the future, but we can't do it if we have three views. So that's where you guys come in. Like he said, like it, subscribe, share it. Um, if you actually enjoyed this, literally post it yourself because people that follow you have similar interests. So post it if you actually liked it. If you didn't, that's perfectly fine too. But you watched this long, so you're weird. <laughs> <laughs> if you stuck around this long and hated every second of this. Um, but yeah, guys, I, I'm incredibly excited for this. And it's literally something that I will see you next week because that's what we're trying to do here. Yes, sir. That's for damn sure. Beautifully, beautifully said. Should be a Thank poet, you. sir. But... Oh. <laughs> so again thank you guys so much this has been the film cave i'm the knight uh, i'm logan <laughs> <laughs> we'll get it we'll get it we'll get it but thank you all for joining Excited. us in the cave. 
And until next time. Next week? Yeah, well, yeah, until next week. Exactly. See y'all in the cave. Peace out.